Good evening. Happy Sunday. Hope everyone is well. My name is Tabriz from the Amateur Football YouTube channel. This is Amateur Footballer Unhinged. Every single Sunday, 8 o'clock, we talk about football. And when I say unhinged, we literally say whatever we want to say, of course, within reason. Um, at this present moment, um, Jamal and and like Paul have gone on holiday together, so literally they're not here with us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> we have special guests. Uh, Mecca, how are you doing, sir? I'm very well, I'm very well. And we have the urban teacher, Mark Martin. How are you doing? Thanks for having me again, Tabriz. Looking forward to another jam pack session, diving into grassroots football. Great stuff. And then, of course, we can have the pillars. We have Ray, manager of Independent Vets. How are you doing, sir? Hey, good evening. Good evening, Tabriz. And the beast is back. Nana, how are you doing? I'm great, brother. It's, 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 a, it's a shame Paul ain't around. <laughs> Don't start. I, I, Don't I was st looking forward to, you know, engaging the shame Paul ain't around. this week. Don't, Don't start. I, I was looking forward to, you know. And who is who's that for the echo? Is that you, Nana? See what I'm saying? Don't start this with me. Not today. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this show is sponsored by the um, uh, London FA, the uh, uh, Challenge Cup, the London Challenge Cup, and also the Independent FC Vets as part of Independent. Let's go straight into it because, again, we have a special guest coming in at, to, at around half past eight. So let's talk about the Prem results. Um, and I think probably what people will probably want to talk about is the. It's a Liverpool game. Um, Liverpool, Liverpool won Man City three. Um, as a, a Liverpool fan, it really Hello, four, four. Oh, sorry, four. Okay, four. Uh, thanks, Nana. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, again, um, I don't know really what to say. I'll, you know, I'm gonna kind of, uh, I'll actually let um, a Mecca start. I mean, what did you think about the game? For first half was pretty boring to be honest. It looked like both teams didn't, yeah, they was trying not to lose the game. Um, yeah, a lot more intensity came into the game second half. Um, and yeah, it was just a game of game of mistakes. Um, Allison, obviously, you can't really condone what he done. You can't, yeah, no explanation for for what he did. Um, and yeah, Foden was great. Liverpool never really looked like winning at any stage. I don't think. Mm, Ray. As a United fan, it's probably not the result that you wanted. Oh, Ray, we can't hear you. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's not the result I wanted. I wanted a Liverpool win, to be honest. That's what we wanted, but shit happens where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay. And um Nana. Yo, um I said it here before a couple of weeks back. Liverpool, I don't think they're going to win the league. So, um, yes, as a United fan, I would have loved them to win. But, hey, Liverpool, between Liverpool and City, any loss is a happy day for me. So. Okay. And Mark? Yeah, I think, as, as I said before, the, the, the strength of the team is not there. And it's starting to... To show more evident now, in in the sense of, you know, just the just the errors at the back, and then obviously, what happens is is that confidence. If the if if the keeper obviously the keeper had a a, a weird day, he saved us many times over the over the years that he's been there. So to have one bad game is nothing huge, but I just think that the at the back is not as what it was, and yeah, we need to rebuild for the summer. Uh, welcome, Coach Barry to to the panel how how are you doing sir uh, good evening to breeze um, everyone good evening gentlemen hey, good evening. um we we were just uh briefly talking about uh the liverpool city game um what's your overall take take on today's result i haven't got an overall view because i didn't see the game today i haven't seen the game yet so i'm just listening to what everybody's saying don't you think i've heard that on social media they're really having a go at um, the keeper, 
the keeper, Alisson. Mm. So I don't know what happened. I didn't see the game, so I don't know what happened. Um, you, know, it's, you know what? I mean, exactly what Mark said. You know, um, I think everyone's seen Alisson actually flick the ball over. Like, um, I don't know. I think it was a Leicester City player's head. So, you know, and like normally he's 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 a very sturdy, but but for take but today for whatever reason, um, ten minutes of madness, and um, I'm not going to say that he's cost us the league, but I I really do think that we are now fighting to just stay in the top four, um, and and I I'm not saying nothing about Klopp leaving or Klopp, there's no like that. But that type of conversation is not going to come out of my mouth. But at this present moment in time, we have two new new centre backs, Fab and Henderson playing centre back, and like we're like losing something. We are losing something. So you know, we are kind of losing a lot of energy and fight in the middle of the park. And you know, I'm not really kind of happy about that. So um, it's 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 a it's a hard pill to swallow. Um, but I mean, again, I mean, what? What do you guys think about Phil Foden? I mean, um, you know, he's he's. Do you think he's kind of a uh, the kind of missing link for like City and possibly the missing link for um, the England team? Well, England, I don't care less about because I don't I want England to do nothing. So I must be honest there. Um, from missing link, I think you're going a bit far. I think Foden's a very good player, excellent player. Um, but he's still young. He's still, he's still, he's still building. He's building himself up. Like, give him time. Don't rush and start calling him all sorts. Just let the boy play. He's enjoying himself and he's showing that he's got a lot of ability. So, mm -hmm. evening to those in the comments. Sorry, but yeah, I just think yeah, let him, let him, yeah, let him grow. Let him grow. Okay. Um, anyone else has got um, an opinion about uh, Foden? This is what we do to every English youngster. The the press, everybody jumps on them. They are the next Pele. They are the next this. The next that. It gets to your head. And in a few years, it's nowhere to be found. Case in point, uh, Wilshere, Ramsey, them lot. The way, the, the way they were piled up to be the next big thing, they haven't lived anywhere near that expectation. I think Foden's a great youngster. Let's give him a few years. Posterity will decide, you know, if indeed he is the link to the England squad or but let, let the boy play football. Let him enjoy himself. Let him play. He, 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 the one word I can have for him is hungry. You know, he's hungry. He's enjoying his football. Let's just stay that way. Not too much pressure on him, you know. Let him enjoy his football. And then... Um, if it's this a city, good. If he doesn't, he still enjoys his football. He becomes a good player. Let's leave him. Let's leave him at that. Out there. Okay. Okay. Um, Ameka or Coach Barry? Yeah, I, I would agree. I think I think it's too much to say that he's the missing link for City, just because we think if De Bruyne is out at the moment, Aguero's out. And I know for me, I, I wouldn't even be hundred percent sure if that think whether you know he would actually make that eleven. And if you look at going to England, all the other players that play in that kind of like front three behind Kane, got players like Mount, Grealish, Madison, Sancho, Sterling, Rashford, Greenwood. I don't know. To say he's a missing link after he's played consistently for what, a few months, I think it's uh, a bit too early. And Coach Barry? Oh, I like Foden a lot. I think Foden's an outstanding player. I think he fits into Man City perfectly, the style of play. Going to England and the way they manage and the way England play, I don't know if he'll be a success of England. All depends on the management and the style of football they play. But I think he's going to be, he's, he's, he can go all the way, me personally, because he's the main thing he's got, he's consistent. He plays good game after game after game. But once again, let's see, he's still very early, still very young. But I think he's... Uh, I think he stops. I love watching him. And um, Mark, I mean, um, I don't know if you um, know anything about Phil Phil Foden. I mean, have you kind of got any opinions about uh, the Manchester United, Manchester, sorry, Manchester City midfielder? 
Yeah, Phil, Phil, Phil's been at like um, a, a real start since um, the academy days. And, you know, we also heard the, um, the, the big the big problem with him. They were trying to compare him and Sterling at one stage in terms of their remuneration. But now you can see quite evidently why Phil is like a, a really high paid uh, young star part of the Man City team. And, you know, he, he's one of, he reminds me of a, a, a lot like a, you know, Michael Owen was just fearless. He's just fearless at the moment. And, it, you know, he's taking everything in his stride. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Honestly, you guys, you know, I'm I'm still hurt about this 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 like result. You know, it's kind of very hard for me to kind of get my energy up. But you know, I why? Listen, you know what? For for like two years, yeah. And and again, you know, um, uh, you know, I'm not gonna. All right, for like two years, Liverpool have been have been um relentless, and and like this this season we. We've just been so me, you know, mediocre, and you know, I've been, I've been like trying to keep optimistic and positive, but the result today is, and it's just put a downer on me. Um, and um, I can't believe again. I'm, I'm literally thinking of you know, top four. You know, can like Liverpool finish in the top four? But you know what? Enough about me because again, this is not about me. This is not about me today, guys. Thank you for everyone that's. Um, that's been um, tuning in. Thank you to all of the messages. Remember, we have George Ender coming on in the next 15 minutes. So get your questions ready. Get your questions ready. So off air, I was kind of literally talking about possibly a couple of teams that have literally made um, a crazy U-turn this season compared to last. Um, and Aston Villa, you know, I think we can all, all agree come into that category. Uh, Coach Barry, what have you been impressed um, with with kind of Aston Villa's um, rise rise to form and kind of literally also their, their like rise and their and kind of and literally how they conduct their business on and off the pitch? I think I think the managers the manager of the club's been very shrewd. They've done great buys, clever buys, and done it very quietly, not like some, especially Manchester United. Everybody <laughs> knows who they are. So they've been very quiet, bought the players, and got in there. But I think, once again, with them, he's changed. He's strengthened the defence. He's strengthened the midfield. So their game has become very, they're very difficult to beat now, not like last year, they can beat easily. And they're excellent away from home. Which is one of the biggest things. Well, it's different this season. I think to be still this season, it's hard to tell because you know there's no crowds, there's no real, they're that same pressure. That same type of pressure with the crowds is missing. So, a little bit for me, still the question still out a little bit how good teams actually are. I think that's a big factor this season. No crowds, the COVID, everything. But I think Aston Villa has been very shrewd, clever with their buys. And the squad's very good. He's got a very good squad. He's got players what I even heard of, and they're performing well week in, week out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark, uh, same same question. I think um, with Aston, you got you got John Terry. I, I was I was reading up on John Terry. Um, you know, since since he's going to cover everyone, raise their eyebrows in the sense that what can John Terry offer? And I think that he. He's given the squad a sense of calmness in his in his approach and in particular their mentality and also the style that they played. So, you know, fair fair due to the to the back end coach and staff. But also the players have come on the pitch. You've got people like Grealish, who's one of the best midfielders probably in Europe at this current time, uh, performing well. And then, you know, you, you had um uh, Ross Barkley, who's come from Chelsea. And he's also come in and, you know, he's got consistent football and played uh, very well. So on the whole, I think that, uh, you know, Aston Villa has has looked, has looked the part and, you know, they, they probably deserved it when they beat us eight, what was it, eight two? Yeah, it was, it was seven, I think it was seven one, seven one. Yeah, seven, seven one. one. And we yeah, had yeah. Van Dijk and we had no excuse because we had all of our players on the pitch. So, you know, Villa, Villa's actually, for me, has been really the surprise team of the season in their consistency in play. OK. Uh, and same question to Ameka.
I think you're on mute. Oh. Right, so, yeah, I think it's too early to, to comment. If you look at how well Sheffield United done last season and where they're at now, um, even when Leicester won the league and in the next season when Ranieri got stuck, I think, yeah, it's too, too early for me. I think their squad's good, but I still think they're punching, punching above their weight at the moment. So if they can do it again next season, I'll be happy to give them a praise. But yeah, as people have said so far, it's a weird season. Um, and it could, yeah, <laughs> they could easily be relegated next year. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be a little bit, uh, yeah, reluctant to say how, how well they're doing at the moment. And a question to Nana. Um, you was um, nodding your head in agreement with Coach Barry when when that you was talking about no like fans in the stadium. Um, how? I mean, again, you know, some some like teams thrive off pressure and some teams buckle. I mean, do you think? If the kind of fans were like at Villa Park, Villa would actually still still be where they are. I think it's it's, it's difficult to say, but um, I was nodding my head, you know, in agreement with Barry because um, this is a strange season. It's, it's a different season, you know, um, compared to what we've seen in the past. And you know, places like Anfield, um, Old Trafford when you go to them places and they always say that the crowd is the 12th man the atmosphere if you've ever, ever been in any of these stadiums you can you can feel the atmosphere and it takes just one game for the crowd to either jump on your back or be against you and that can go a long way to you know dampening the confidence of the team or lifting the sky high so I was agreeing with Barry because I think that the crowd play a crucial, a very important part um, of the game. And now what we're seeing is teams are having to play without pressure. And some teams are getting used to it. Some teams aren't. Um, if you are in a stadium full of supporters and you're not playing well and, you know, someone starts screaming and shouting at you, they, are, they might be professionals, but they're all human beings. Mm. So, you know, you can keep on thinking about your next pass, making sure that it's right. And if you miss that next pass, again, you're in trouble. You can have a bad game for the rest, of, you know, for the whole game. Um, in terms of Villa, they have recruited very well. Um, people like Watkins and uh, Grealish, they're playing out of their skin, which we know that they could play but their organization is solid at the moment. They don't concede a lot of goals. And as opposed to the previous season, what we've seen as, as the, the way we've seen Aston Villa play, now they hold the ball with a bit more confidence. You know, they're not kicking long balls. They're actually trying to work the ball to people like Grealish um, to make something happen. And it's beautiful to see. So, you know, kudos to them playing really well. Let's see if they can continue this form next season, especially when they lose someone like Grealish, which I, who I think is going to go probably City, uh, probably United. Um, and also when eventually the fans come back. Let's see Let's see how they fare then. It, it's early days yet, but I'm enjoying the football they're playing. Okay. And a and, uh, question to Ray. I mean, um, who... Who do you think in the Villa Villa team is is the unsung hero? Um, unsung hero. Um, I don't know if I'd say there's an unsung hero. I think as a team they've done well. Um, I agree with everything that's been said. I think it's hard to judge them properly, but you could argue they can only beat what's in front of them and play the game as it stands now. So at the moment now. They do have, there's no fans in there and they're making the most of it. They're playing very well. Um, I agree he's bought very well. Um, I think the Arsenal goalkeeper has done exceptionally well since yeah. he's gone there. Martinez, um, yeah. Yeah, Martinez has done really well since he's gone there. Carried on from the way he was playing at the end of last season. Um, Watkins jumping up from Brentford has done very well. Um, as someone said in the comments, John McGinn is busy. I think they're just a very good unit. I think they're a very good unit and they play to their strengths. They they play football and but they, they're a tight knit unit. They go out there and they, 
they, they do all the basics well and then they have that little bit extra. I think I like Triori as well. So mm. no, they're a good they're a good they're a good they've had, they've had a good season. I think right. the proof of the pudding will be next season. Let's see what they do next season. Um in regards to Grealish, yeah, he's just he gives them that little bit extra when they need it at times. And yeah, they they've had they've done well. But can they do it season after season? Like you've got Leicester who have done it season after season. Can they do it season after season? That's where we'll see. Mm, and you know, I, and I know <laughs> you guys kind of disagree with me regarding this point, but you know, I think West Ham have to have to be in that, you know, in this conversation as well. Oh, um, pool now. No, I mean, listen, you know, let, let's be real. You know, um, West Ham were were like struggling last season, and you know, I think they're fifth or sixth, or, or fifth, sixth, or seventh, um, and they've recruited well, um, and I think. I think talking, well, kind of probably jumping onto Coach Coach Barry's um, comment about having having no fans. I think having having no fans at the um, Olympic Stadium has actually helped the Hammers because you know everyone knows that they are passionate about their team, and I think having no like fans there, have, you know, they've literally just played with no fear. Every single one of them have played without any fear. And again, I don't know if any of you guys agree or disagree. With like my like my statement. Anyone? I would disagree. Really? I think for me, football's a game of like small margins. And I think when it is close, you do need a bit of individual quality. So the Aston Villa point I can like get get on board with I think they've got players in their team like Grealish and Barkley who, you know, if they need it, can kind of come up with that spark of magic. I don't see that in the West Ham side. I don't <laughs> when things are tough and you like, you need someone to to pop up. I don't think they have anyone consistently that you can kind of hang your hat on and be like, "Oh, we've got so and so that's going to win us win us the game today." So yeah, next season I think they'll go back to finding it very difficult. Okay, okay. Um, anyone else agrees with what um, Ameka said? I agree with Emeka. I, I don't know where you're going with this West Ham point. Well, this is it. I don't. This is Tabriz has got this. I've been determined that he wanted to get it out. He actually had to about the rise of West Ham. The rise of West Ham, man. Come on. a good spell. I mean, you're talking about the right, like the challenge of the title. I don't know where you're going with this. This is you and your own little tangent again. <laughs> but, but I, I've got to, I've got to recognize. We've got to recognize that getting in, they're currently sitting in the top five. So you know, from from West Ham that we knew uh, prior seasons, they've done okay. They've done, they've, they've done not too bad to be in top five. Yeah, that's a completely different statement rather than the rise of West Ham. Same <laughs> 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 statements. The Bruce has actually said. I want to talk about the rise of West Ham. They're in the top five. We're in what? February? We're in February. They could, have, they could not win again now to the end of the season. What are we going to say? The rise and fall of West Ham. It's the same bloody season. I'll just stop your tea again. Uh, I, I warned him, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 um, I, I, I? Honestly, you know what? I mean, maybe like because I, you know, I kind of know. Some of the ins and outs of the club, and 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 I know how how a lot of the players feel about the club and also the fans as well. Just kind of seeing them just just play with, without any freedom. And let's you know, Lingard is like now is them now there, and you know he kind of looks. I know it's just one game, but um, you know this could really help Lingard's career. I mean, again. Ray, oh, God. <laughs> come on, can we should follow them tonight, mate? I agree with this. this could be good for Lingard's career. I think he needed to play football. I didn't like to see him just sat there rotting. I like, I, I, I liked Lingard, I think he's a good finisher, and I'm happy that he's gone to West Ham and we've got some games and play. Like, the rest of it, no. No, I don't know where you're going with this. No. I, think, I, think, I think West Ham have always been um, a difficult place for, for teams to go. Um, 
they, they, Mo is, the, is quite a shrewd manager, and once he gets the team playing like he did in West um, Everton, they, they will be they will always be at the court side to beat, and you can see it, you know bit, some players you know playing really well solidly as a whole team. But we shouldn't really be talking about West Ham right now because yeah. They, they start the same way. Season, season in, season out, they start the same way. They climb up high and they end like 16, 17, 15. Let's move on. Man. They're like bubbles. Throw it out. Oh, oh, wow. It's going to be one of these shows. It's going to be one of these shows. But anyway, guys, you know what? There is a, literally a knock on the door and. and and um, I've got to let this guy in. I have to, you know, let this guy in. Actually, let me first of all include Urban Teacher. But you know what? We have George in the in the studio. Um, George, how are you doing, sir? I'm good, my brother. How are you, man? You well? I, I am well. I am well. I'm well. Welcome to the amateur footballer unhinged. Thank you. Um, Thank you. you know, what? be uh, before we let begin. Again, I just want to show everyone out there. You know, just a few of your highlights. Just a few of your highlights. Okay, man. Cool, man. So, you know, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. So, guys, you know, let me just repeat. Yeah, we have a former Premiership footballer on the unhinged amateur footballer, ex Crystal Palace, ex Winden Town, ex Wolves, striker, a left footed genius. I didn't even know that he was even left left footed. So, you know what? You, you, um, you and I are very similar. Oh really? You look like a little bit as well, man. You look like a little bit as well. 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 You look like a little bit <laughs> you know, I'm on my best behavior. I'm gonna be on my best. Nah, <laughs> man. Nah. No, no, I was talking about man. Be you. Cool. <laughs> no, I can't because what Tabriz has just said is actually scandalous. Log <laughs> off. Next, I'm gonna log off and just shut down and go about my business. Log <laughs> <laughs> off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, George, uh, George, honestly, thank oh, you, no, um, thank you, you for, for like coming on. And you know what? Again, um, big like shout to uh, Coach Coach Barry, who's come on now. Who's, who's, you know, what I'm saying like you yeah. know, a guru legend. So thank you again as well to Coach Barry. No worries, George. So yeah. let, you know what? I'm literally just gonna say from from the start. This is this is like the unhinged um, show. So, of course, you know everything's going to be respectful. Um, yeah. We are going to ask you some some like questions. Um, there's going to you know people on on like the chat are kind of already kind of talking about you and literally kind of got some questions. Okay. Um, and you know if it's not all right with you know you know everyone on the kind of panel, I think I'm going to start. Um, so, um, George, you. Um, I I kind of heard that you kind of had the opportunity to to possibly play for um, for like Stoke um, when you know um, when like you was kind of coming like back from your from your injuries. Um, yeah. If it was a top four club, would you have said no? No. Where I was in my career that time, 
So I was at Wolves for seven years. Um, Wolves of Mark was my dream, my dream move at, at that stage of my career, obviously. And um, I was at Wolves for a week. Um, I signed on the, I think I signed on a Thursday. Um, no, I signed, I signed on a Tuesday. Then we had a game on a Wednesday, midweek, against Sheffield United. Had a very good game then. Then I played um, the following weekend against Port Vale. And then the net, my third game, so I made it a full week, was against Black Country Derby against West Brom. And I broke my leg. Um, bad tackle from, a, well, the, the opponent was a guy called Matt Carbon. Um, he, was a, he actually was a friend of mine. And um, yeah, um, you know, the ball, the ball was was there to be there to be won. Is in my like 73 in my favor. I saw Matt coming, so but I knew I I had the pace to get there and, and go past Matt. So I've gone past him. But as I've gone past him, you're thinking in your head, well, he's still coming. So I sort of skipped past him, but he just kept coming. I stepped over my, with my left foot, gone past my left foot, and he just come through and taken my right my, my right foot. I've done like a somersault in the air. So I'm on the ground and I'm like. I'm just hoping my leg's intact because it, it, it was a heavy challenge. Matt's a big, big guy. I'm a slight guy, but Matt's a, is a big guy. So, by the grace of God, my leg was intact. So, the fizzle come on. I hobbled off and I tried to run it off. I tried to go come back on because I was in my new club, Black Country Derby. We are doing myself at Ali Akimba at front at the time, doing really well, causing West Brom all sorts of problems. Um, tried to run it off and I said, my leg's killing me, man. So I said, look, okay, take it, get him off, took me off, um, watch, just carried on watching the game, got in the training master of the game, I think we drew nil-nil. Um, but then the physio um gave me put a pack of ice on my on my, on my leg. So now I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't, the ice was just made made my leg so so painful. Wasn't it wasn't normal pain. Obviously, put ice in the leg is ice. You know, any injury, put ice in to, to to um to, to reduce the swelling. This time it just made the pain like even worse. I thought, no, 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 I'll take it off. So I went, they, they so the physio said something's not right. Took me to the hospital, had a scan and everything. And I'll never forget the nurse. She's come out and she said, Well, you're a waste of money, aren't you? <laughs> said, what? what? She said, you broke, you broke your leg. I went, You're kidding me. So basically, I was out, I was out, I was out for like nine months with that with that. Um, but after that, I had injury after injury after injury. It was just it was nuts. The amount of injuries I had at Wolves was just was crazy. So, in seven years, I played about ninety eight games. So, when I decided to retire, um, I said, "Look, I've had enough. I've had enough injury after injury. I've had enough." So then, when Stoke came, I'd retired. But then Tony Pulis was at Stoke at the time, and I played for Tony as a young as a young um, player at Gillingham on loan. I went on loan to Gillingham with Tony Pulis. So he wanted me at Stoke, and I said, "Look, I've had enough." No, I said, "I said no." I had enough. When I get right down to London, my head's gone, and I just that's why I turned down Stoke. So at the, it wasn't a case of what, if, even as a top four club, my head wasn't right. I had enough of football, and that's okay. why I just, I just I quit. I quit the game. Then. All right, okay. Um, Nana, I'd love to kind of get your like question to to uh, George. Yeah, cheers. Um, thanks for coming on the show, George. Um, pleasure, pleasure, man. If I ask the question, two things. Um, really impressed with the, that shot video um you, the pace yeah. and to say to Tobriz the only thing you've got in common is that we are both black <laughs> <laughs> your, 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 your left foot is absolutely <laughs> atrocious <laughs> thank you man thank you, you. you you kick the ball and it goes into space uh, so please uh, crazy dead that crazy. um mm. I, my, my, I guess one of my questions is um mm. Because you played up up until about 2006, I believe. Yeah, retired in 2006. Yeah. Yeah. What were your experiences in terms of being a black man and and racism in the elite in elite football? Did you experience any? Were they were there any ones that stuck in your mind still do? Mm hmm. Uh, listen. Yeah, you 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 work out very quickly that things are different for black players, um, as opposed to white players. You know, we 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 laugh loud, we walk a certain way, we talk a certain way, and certain managers can't handle that. Certain managers, because when you when you play football, you're, you're meeting people from all over the country, all over Europe, all over the world, and 
you know, I'm a South London boy, man. And so what usually happens, especially back then, the black players gravitate. So the black take the black players stay tight, and it's just the way we are. We got everything in common, our music, the way we, you know, our culture, you know. So um, if a black player is, is, is very passionate, is not happy with something, and we put our point across, oh, he's got a chip on his shoulder. What have you been like that for? He's got a chip on his shoulder. So, well, but if a, if a, if our white can't counterpart said that, it wouldn't be a problem. You know, people feel intimidated with black players, um, but we worked out very quickly. Yeah, that um, that system of racism existed. You know, but unfortunately, we could speak, we could speak about it as much as we could, we could raise it as much as we could. But the problem is, the people at the top, we control the game. They're not, they're not black. So back then, especially, we had no chance. You know, especially things like as a young pro at Palace, we played West Ham away. You're warming up. The worst thing for a black player to do is warm up at West Ham or Millwall. When you run down the line warming up, you're getting absolutely, listen, the abuse you get is just like, really? I remember one time at Palace we played, so sorry, going back to West Ham, I'm warming up, and myself and Andrew Impey are warming up. Andrew Impey just signed for West Ham. I'm, I'm at Palace, I mean, Andrew chatting, like, yeah, just catching up, just, oh, just warming up, just, yeah, good to see, you know, good move to West Ham, hope it goes well. In the corner, you just hear, you yeah, black monkey, you yeah, black bastard, you yeah, black, I'm like, so me and Imps just look at each other like, he's a black man. He plays the West Ham. We look at each other like, wow. And you can't say nothing. You can't do nothing. But it, it hits you and you think, I've got a job to do if I go on, but <sighs> wow. It, it's just, but it's, just, it's part and parcel. You just have to get on with it. We played Palace one time. By the grace of God, I was blessed to score two goals in that game. We beat them 4-1 or 4-2, whatever. The Millwall fans went nuts to start running on the pitch. The man's are run, fans are running on the pitch for us. Police are coming with horses, and you think, I'm a South London man, that's down the road from us. That's Millwall. It's not like it's in Burnley. That's South London. But every time you go Millwall, it's like, you feel like something's going to kick off. You know, so it's this, yeah, we, we, you know, you know, you're a black man in football. It's better now, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's just there in a, in a more of a, on a, in a subtle way. They know they can't say certain things, they know they can't do certain things to get away with it. So they know they've got to be very careful. But as a black man, unfortunately, just yeah, we knew full well we were black and it was it was tough, but it's something we just we just had to get on with and just do 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 things the best we could. Thank um, thank you for your kind of honest and uh, mm. uh candid answer. Um so in the chat, um Marcus said, George Ender, you ruined my night when you kind of knocked Chelsea out of the cup when you played at Palace free free wow. one. Wow, wow. <laughs> Sorry, man. Sorry. Sorry to ruin you. Sorry to ruin your night. No, you you know what? I don't you know um, I don't like this guy. So you know I'm actually glad that you know um you, you actually beat Chelsea. So <laughs> that was a mad night, man. That was a that night was crazy. I think that was my first goal for Palace. And my first seeing me goal. Mm. You know, that, that, it was a really wet night, muddy. The, the conditions are horrible. You know, Chelsea's a big club. It's a big big club. I think we're underdogs at the time. You know, so first win three one was a big night and there's quite a few youngsters played myself a guy called grant watts was up front bobby barry played so our team was really was really really young i was i was just 17. you know oh, so wow. for, yeah man so for us to beat Pat and chelsea with big big players at that time was it was a big achievement for us and for me that's when my career really really took off like that so it was, a, it was a good night for us a night i'll never forget yeah, amazing. Just a shit team anyway, so yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, Ray, um, uh, love to kind of um, get like your question to to George. Uh, good evening, George. Um, good evening, well, question. Um, mm. You were at Palace, um, what, 92 to 97? Yeah. So you were at, well, I don't know if you were in the team on the night, but the night when Cantona kicked. I was there, yeah. I was there, man. What yeah. was what what kind of things were said in the palace changing room or amongst you as players when he did it? It was because I was I was actually in the squad that, that was there, but I wasn't in the squad, you know, so I was in the stands watching it. Um and it was nuts, man, because Canton had come off, and then we just saw a guy just come running down from the stand just at giving him some serious abuses all the way he's at the back of the stand he ran all the way down right to the, to the um, side of the pitch and he's giving him abuse you're french blah blah and Cantona just 
just walking because Atkins had this 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 air about him. The, the guy was a proper, yeah, it was Cantona. Obviously, we know he's serious, but when you when you're around him, you're like, yeah, this guy's he's got something. He's different, man. And he's just walking. You know, he walked with his collars up and he's walking, and he, he just sort of just looked at the guy. And you kind of walk, and something just snapped in his head. And he went, and obviously we know what happened. Mm. And then he, he's got, he's, he's gone off. So we've run down to the changing rooms, and he's gone through the, the the back of the changing room, and they took him through the players' lounge, and there was police there. Everybody was just like, you can't. These things didn't happen. All the players just were just like, wow, can you believe it happened? Because as footballers, you learn that you get stick, but you can't do anything. It's hard, but that's just part and parcel. But Canton just did what we wanted to do. He didn't care. We were all just in, in shock. You've never seen nothing like it. You probably never seen nothing like it anytime soon. You know, we were just in his shock. We just couldn't believe what he did. And it's a hard one because sometimes fans, they just think they can say what they want. They just, you know, whether it's racism or, okay, Cantona, you got sent, you know, you got sent off. But what happened to that guy who ran down from way back in the stand, come out of his seat, just to come all the way down and give him dogs abuse? You know, we're human, but the footballers are human beings, and he just snapped. He don't understand. He don't understand in his life. He don't know what was in his mindset at the time. So obviously, something wasn't right for him to snap like that. But we were all just in complete and utter shock, man. We really were crazy night. And wow. on a one away, did you? Was you thinking? I'm glad it weren't a black man that did it. Or, <laughs> you know, wow. Um, I, if I'm honest, at the time I didn't think that. I was just, I was just shocked. But talking to you now, I'm glad it wasn't a black man. Because if it was a black man, I don't think it would have been worse. Probably, mm. it would have been worse. But some maybe. Let's say that. Let's say. Let's flip it around. Let's say that guy says something racist to a black player. Let's say. That, let's say Cantona was black, and the guy ran down and gave him racial abuse, and Cantona did that. Maybe I'm not. I don't condone violence at all. But maybe some, maybe that needed to happen to shock people. Like, listen, you can't just go around saying things like that. You can't because mm. all these people you meet them out there in in in, in normal life, they would never say things like that. Mm. But mm. when it comes to fans and they get together and mob mentality and tribal mentality, these guys go nuts. Some of these guys has got not normal good jobs in the city or whatever, or nine to five jobs. Wouldn't say we two good. Get together as fans. Something, something. You know, it, it's it's. They've got their colours on, they've got their colours on, they've got their blue stripes, they've got red stripes, they've got their, 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 their shirts and their scarves on, and they just go nuts. Sometimes you're playing, you hear things, you look at the stand and you're like, really? Now, I can have a joke with a fan, with an opposing fan, it's not a problem, I expect to get abused, but there's a certain line, man. There's certain mm. things you don't say and certain things you don't do. You know, and to, to things like throwing bananas on pictures and that, it's just... And the sad thing is, it's come back again. It's never gone away, don't get me wrong, it's just been, just been hidden, but now... Because of social media, now these guys are just—they're very brave now, and they think they can do and say what the hell they want, and it's got to be stopped, man. It really does. Yeah. Well, mm. uh, no, thank you. Yeah. Um, we we don't have a question from uh, Wesley Pipes. Uh, wow. I mean, I, I don't know what exactly what he's doing, but hey. Um, question for like George, and he can't sit on his and he can't sit on the fence. Sean Newton or Bruce Dyer? Who would you pick on the right to supply you? Um, that's a very easy question because actually Bruce Dyer is a striker and Newt's the right winger, so it'd be Sean Newton. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, uh, okay, so question to you: mm. Who, who like had the the like most natural ability out, out of them those two? Uh, There's different players. Newt's was, was a right winger, as I say, and Bruce is a striker, but probably Brucey. But Bruce's strength actually was his actual strength. He Bruce Dyer, I never forget one training session when Bruce he got signed from Palace for, for Palace um, from Watford. So he was the first a million pound teenager. So um, and he, he one of his first training sessions, <laughs> I fl I didn't train. I must have been I was I was in the physio room, and Chris Coleman, um, after this training session. Now, obviously, can you remember Chris Coleman? Big, Chris mm -hmm. Coleman, a massive guy, big centre half or stroke striker. And Chris Coleman comes comes in after training, and he's gone. Bruce Dyer is the strongest man in the world. Cause what Bruce would do, he he, you look at him, he's like a quite slight build, but Bruce Dyer could roll players 
no matter how big you are, he will pin you. So as a, as a striker, you want to pin, you want to fill your centre half, and you want to pin him. Once you pin him, you've got him. So you can go left, or you can go left or right. Bruce Star was a master. You, you couldn't get him with the ball. So if he pins you, you can't. I see people try and push him. Mm -mm. He's a master at pinning. So Bruce, his natural ability with the strength and his feet and his finishing, top top player, top young player. But mm -hmm. even with Bruce, when he came, it was sad to be fair because when he came to Palace, he he, he come. With a big reputation, got a good contract at Palace. Young black boy making a lot of money. You can see even in the changing room, certain senior players didn't like it. So this is what I'm talking about the racism before. Certain white players, elder, older players, didn't like it. So I mean, so the young black players are like Brucey, watch your back, man. You can see because Brucey made his money. Brucey liked the nice cars and, and good luck to him. Why shouldn't he? Why couldn't he? It's his money. But certain people didn't like it because some people, especially back then, for a young black boy to be making such vast amounts of money, um, there's a bit of a, there's a lot of green-eyed monsters out there, which was sad to see, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. oh, um, that's, you know, again, um, a great kind of open, open and honest answer. For, um, th thank you, George. Uh, let's get, let's kind of go to Emeka. Emeka, um, we kind of love to kind of get your question to George. Evening, evening. So my question is to know how selfish um, the game is. So obviously you're you were an attacking player. Mm. Was, from my times when when I was playing semi pro, and it's like you have a goal bonus, maybe like I'm talking small money, like five ten pounds, and you'll be mm. for a goal. Who'd you like, play for? Man? Who'd you play for? Uh, this is a team called Cornard United. So, okay. Yeah, it's up in Colchester. So and I'm like. For ten pounds, I'm taking my chance with the goalkeeper. I'm not passing it. Although yeah, the, yeah. Best thing, <laughs> the best thing to do for the team would be to square it. So yeah. obviously, when you know pro players on a lot bigger bonuses, does that come yeah. into the game? People are trying to move up, score more goals, get get moves to bigger teams. Does that come into your thinking at all? No, for me personally, obviously I had a goal bonus, but the most important thing is the team. The most important thing is winning. So if I can square it, it's happening. I'm squaring it, it's happening because if you if you don't square it, if you if you're gonna if you're gonna take it on yourself, you've got to score. You cannot miss. You know, so goal bonuses are there, but I think listen, with you, I totally understand. If it's if it's 10 pounds or whatever, listen, you need to get your money, man. But, <laughs> but, 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 but I think when you're playing, when it's if it's your job, if it's your job and you and your the stakes are really high and you're trying to win certain titles and or medals, or it's about the team. And it's always about the team, man. You know, so as a striker who's got, who's got a goal bonus, yeah, you got a goal bonus, but these guys are intelligent, man, intelligent players. They know if they've got to square it. They know. They know if they can take it on themselves. They know they've, if they're going to take it on themselves, you've got to score. So for me, it was never a case of being greedy like that. Not at all. For me, it's always about the team. If, if a teammate's in a, in a better position than me, I'm definitely going to square it. But I started my career as a left, 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 left winger anyway. So that real hunger, like that really selfish instinct wasn't really in me anyway. You know, so if I couldn't, I, I, was, I was happy to assist us as well as score anyway. So as long as we won the game, it's the most important thing to me. And you know, you know, um, I just want to say, Mo Salah must be on some huge goal bonus, man, because yeah. that guy does not pass for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. You can see there's something with him and Mane, you can just tell. Yeah. It's a professional, it's professional, it's cool, it's professional, but you can tell. Marley looks like he feels like he's he's not appreciated as Salah is because Salah's the main boy, yeah. you know. So you can just tell the dynamic isn't you know. So you have got to be very careful. Obviously, Klopp knows what he's doing, but he knows he'll be very careful managing the two of them because Salah doesn't pass on nobody. But <laughs> times out of ten, he scores. That's the thing. So what, as long as he's scoring, what can you do? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, thank you for your question, um, Ameka. Um, I'm going to go to Urban Teacher Mark. Um, could you? Um, Please um, give your question to, to George. Hi, George. Marvin, Hi, related, um, I'm, I'm more coming from the, the kind of youth education and yeah. uh, business side. And, you know, obviously I was reading your bio the other day and, you know, there was something around bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you was at your all-time high of obviously earning money, you know, gaining that status and material stuff, and mm -hmm. obviously finding faith with all the we've been that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
what were the signs or we just probably even before we get to the signs how is it for a, a, a footballer with lots of money? What do they need to be thinking about? Because there probably might be footballers here going into, what's it, semi-pro or pro. What are the things that they should be thinking about at this stage? What, they're starting to make money now? Yeah. Investment. Invest, 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 invest. Property, 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 property. So with me, as a young player... Where I'm from, my background, probably similar to all you guys. When you get new money, it's like, what the? Wow. Okay. Um, right. Let me buy that car. Okay. Let me look after mum. Let me look after my brothers. Let me look after my friends. Let me buy these clothes. Let me buy that jewelry. Let me, let me, let me, let me buy, buy, buy because it just comes in at a big amount. And you're like, okay. So the more you earn, the more you spend because it's new money. I'm not used, I wasn't used to big money. We came from humble beginnings. So all of a sudden, everybody's nice. But looking back at it, everybody can't be nice because you're not going to get that sort of money forever. So you've got to invest. So when I got my injuries, I had a lot of time to think. So I thought, I've got to start buying property, which I did. But I didn't buy I should have bought more. The money I was earning, I should have bought more. You know, so the, 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 I'll explain how we became bankrupt. So what happens is when you're rolling with these certain, in these certain circles, you're going to meet bigger footballers. So I played at a certain level, but I will know the top boys because they're all in the same circle. We all go out together. We all So those top boys have got a financial advisor. So that financial advisor comes and let's say, for example, Rio Ferdinand's doing something. So because Rio's a big boy, everybody else will follow, trickles down. So towards the end of my career, we... A lot of footballers, a lot of celebrities um, invested in like film partnerships, film schemes. So it's, get, it's, it's, it's all it's all through HMRC. It's all legitimate. There's a loophole from HMRC. But these things are very complex. So these are things your financial advisors do for you. They advise you, advise you. You put your money in and you get you, you get tax relief. OK, everybody's doing it. It's not illegal. Gordon Brown opened the legislation, so we're all investing properly in, in, in English in English films. That's what we did. So I did it. I got a huge amount of money back. So that was that. Everything's fine. And then, then I retired in 2006. Probably done a tax scheme in 2008. I think around about 10 years late. Well, 10 years later, when then George Osborne becomes Chancellor of the Exchequer, he looked at the tax scheme and goes, that's tax avoidance. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to close that, that, that loophole, but what I'm going to do, I want to tax back now. Ten years later, I get a letter from HMRC, <laughs> brand envelope, you owe X. I'm like, what? And you've got to pay it now, by the way. Hold on a minute, I retired ten years ago. Don't care what I'm on you now. So, uh, okay, give me some time. No, we want it now. So, Carl Long says, sure, that's where the bank banks are coming from. So, loads of players ex and retired players all got made bankrupt. But you get someone like David Beckham, no problem. How much? He pays it. They're the big boys. But the guys underneath that, a lot of people went under, a lot of people still find it now. So what I'm saying is, you've got to be very, very careful with your money. Any young player I speak to now, don't worry about all these fancy schemes. Bricks and mortar. Investment. Nothing, no quick money, just property, 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 property. Get a portion of your wages. Right, take some of that, put that there, save that, invest that, and I live off this. When I was paid, I live off that. Anybody need money? There you go. I wasn't like, what do you need it for? What are you doing with that money? It's, it's, interesting you say, it's interesting you say that because at the time, mm -hmm. you had obviously Robbie Fowler buying all of this real estate. Right. You had the Man United, uh, you know, fantastic five buying football club or amateur clubs or semi-pro clubs, whatever you want to call them. And also they're buying big real estate too, but they done it in a group. Yeah. I understand when you're saying do it in an individual thing, but ain't it more powerful doing it in a group like as, the, as these other footballers were doing it at the time and getting these big rewards? No, that you don't need, if you want to do it in a group, it's up to you, but you can still do it by yourself. The man I was early, I could have, I should have probably finished with, so you get people like Robbie Savage, Robbie Savage, Craig Bellamy, they've got about 70 properties each. So by themselves. You know, so I had about the maximum, I had, I had about five or six. I should have had 20, easy. If I had 20, I'd have been fine. 
you know, but you had nobody, I had no one guiding me at the time. I had nobody really teaching me at the time. So now you learn a lot. You went, okay, hindsight's a great thing, but sometimes the best way to learn is to get burnt. That's the best way you learn. That's the best way you pass on your knowledge. But you see today now, a lot of these footballers are making crazy money before they've even done anything. These boys in certain academies on 20K a week, they don't even know when they're the first team. So that's a mess. So what they've got, they're not in the first team. They play for the 23s and they've got a lot of time on their hands. So they're going to gamble, they're going to drink, they're going to do silliness, they're going to get in trouble. Because a lot of them haven't got the right people around them, but they've got big entourages. And you look at them and you think, you can see where they're going to go. So it's about having the right team around you. And you also, sometimes you've got to be like, I was too generous. A friend of mine said, Jules, look, can you lend me 2K? Have it, man. Jules, can you lend me... Have it, man. That's me being silly because you think that's my boy. But when you lose everything, people disappear. People disappear because this game is about this game is 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 it's not real life, man. It's not real life because you're moving in certain circles, but it's just not these. You gotta understand a lot of it is acquaintances. So the people that you got around you from young or your main friends, they're the ones you roll with. They're the ones you always stay with, which I did not know. I always stay with those guys. But there's a, there's a whole new entourage. So when everything comes crashing down, they're gone. So I've known Barry. I've played with Barry since I was 11. Barry is still my people so from, from when I was 11. I'm 46 now. You get what I'm saying? So, But other people I play with, I like to be some of my team. They're, cool. They're, they're, they're cool, but they're acquaintances. It's not in your day. Every, they're not in your life every day. So as long as you know that, and no, don't get me wrong, I met some great people in football. I've done some great things. I've been blessed to have the career I had. But you got to understand, a lot of these people that come into your life, they're not really for you. They're for what you can give them. So what one, one bit of advice I give to a young footballer is that you got to look at, it, look at people like this. Look at the people you've got in your life. Look at the people you've got in your circle. And who is there for you? Who would, they, who would be there for you if all you had to give them is your love? If all you got for them is your heart, who will still be, who, who will still be around you? If all you've got to give them is your love and your time and your respect and your heart, whoever's still there, that's who you roll with. Because a lot of people, they'll be gone. You've got no money for me, no? Gone. That's the one with what I was to a young player. Who would be there for you if all you got is your love? That's who you got to roll with. Don't roll with anybody else. Be smart, man. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, oh. and, and um, we have one like comment from Hetman Security. Ray has a few yards and he can advise as well. So, Ray, like, okay, so you are also a, a property investor as well, Ray. You see, this is why I knew you were gonna <laughs> 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 bang out of order. <laughs> <laughs> All the comments <laughs> that you put on there, I agree, <laughs> <laughs> they should, they, when you look at footballers now. And you wonder where is the I mean, like you see some and you wonder where is the support system around them? Yeah. Where are the people around them that say yeah. say that do that? Yeah. And yeah, like, it's it is it, for me it's sad to see, but it's it's I mean the bad part of it is it's it happens all too much. Yeah, it does, man. You it just does. want someone to grab someone by the neck and say, Hold on, stop. Mm -hmm. to do. But mm -hmm. We're always suspicious rather than hearing good advice. Yeah. Here and now. Yeah. I don't think we, I don't know, man. As I said, we don't, I don't think we roll together. We don't think we help each other enough as, 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 as black people. I just don't think we do. You know, I think a lot of, a lot of the time it's like, how come he's got that? I want that. Or you want to rob, man wants to rob a man or he's like, why can't we do things together? Why, 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 why are we like that for? You get the Asians, they're tight. You get the Jews, they're tight. It's not a color thing, but that's something you realize. It's like, wow, certain people give us a lot of red eye, man. It's like, mm -hmm. why? If I see any of you guys doing well, heavy. Mm -hmm. Good to see you doing well. Do your thing, man. Love that. Congratulations. Keep doing, keep pushing. Keep pulling everybody else up with you. Keep trying to help, help the community. But a lot of people not like that. A lot of people like, how come he's got that? He thinks he's this, he's this. Why? I don't understand it, man. How are we meant to progress if we're always looking at, 
you know, people did being successful, you don't like it. Me and Barry have so many conversations about this, man. So many conversations. Barry's the most humble man you know, but even I say to Barry, Barry, Barry's been doing what he's been doing for 30 odd years. Produce some top talent out of South London. And a man, a man I watch Barry just jealous for Barry because Barry's just being Barry. Barry ain't watching nobody. Barry's not hurting nobody. Barry's not teeth for nobody. Barry's just being Barry. And because of that love, gravitate. Kids come. Parents love Barry. My family love Barry to this day. But people are like, how come he's how come he's got him? How come he's done the final Klein now? How come? Barry's minding, Barry watching them, Barry's just doing what he's doing. But because Barry's heart's pure, God's bless Barry with, with this gift of producing players. So why are you hating on people like Barry for? I'm like, if I didn't know Barry, I'd be like, that guy, man. I'm saying to Barry, Barry, how, how do you do it? I'm trying to pick his brains. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to be the next Barry. Yeah, but these people just want to watch Barry and don't like it. I'm like, Barry, man, these, it, it hurts. It hurts. It's sad, but unfortunately, this, this, is, this, is, this is the price of, of success sometimes, unfortunately. Well, that was a question I was going to ask. I was going to ask you because, like, I ask Barry all the time. You, know, you see footballers, like, I can't remember when it was, but there was a situation where there's a club up in Newcastle that Michael Carrick played for, Alan Shearer played for, and they were having financial difficulties. Uh, they just wrote them a check to say, yeah. look, that club can't go under. It's got yeah. going. And I always ask Barry, why yeah. is it you don't see black players or players that have come from independent Accra giving something back. Like, mm -hmm. I see Barry trying to find investment, trying to sort out the club, trying to help get keep independent going. And mm -hmm. for me, it's always frustrating when I see players that have come for it and not one of them turn around and say, here, this mm -hmm. is the generation. This is for the next lot to go forward. Or mm -hmm. not even in terms of just financially, even just time. Mm -hmm. like, Go down there. Mm -hmm. Offer to do the odd coaching session here and there. Bring mm -hmm. a bit of limelight to the club. And it just, mm -hmm. it, it, it drives me mad. Barry will tell you. Like, mm -hmm. there are times it just drives me mad. And I'm like, on the phone to him, like, what is it? What is the difference between those clubs and us? Why they can't come back and help give a helping hand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. there's a time where I, I don't know, if Barry's told you, but I brought somebody, and um, this this guy's a prominent agent. He's, 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 he's one of the biggest agents in the UK. Um, and then um, I brought him, and I told him about Barry. So we had a meeting, and then um, me and Barry went to go and see him. And he, I told him who Barry is, what Barry's about, what Barry's done, and then um, we agreed in a, We had an agreement um, to, for him to invest into independent, which he did. And he only that investment. Um, but then I said to him, this guy, he's a Jewish guy. I said, listen, this takes time. Barry can't just click his fingers and have 10 kids for you, but Barry produce players for you. So leave Barry B. And me and Barry do it. Just leave Barry B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem, no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem. Fine. After a while, I'm getting phone calls. George, where's the players? Excuse me, where's the players? I said, be patient. I told you to be patient. I told you to be patient. It's going to take time, but Barry will guarantee you players. The man couldn't wait. Next thing you know, he's sending agents to games, independent games, without telling me, without telling Barry. Barry's ringing me. George, who's this? Who's this? Who's this agents? Who's this agents? All the agents trying to come to the players and get their babies. But we know, I told the man, nothing's going to run without Barry. The parents don't know you. You don't come to South London from flipping Essex and if you're going to come to in the pet, come to like Fort and Eve and tease these players. It doesn't run like that. If it runs through Barry. So what I'm saying is it's been done. People don't listen. People aren't patient. People don't trust. They're greedy. They want that. They want the money, unfortunately. So you try it one way, we try that way. It didn't work. And I think certain players football so big now certain players that have come through in the independent more recently 
I'm not saying they're, they're, they've forgotten where they're coming from, but I'm just, I'm like this. What Barry's done for some of these players and what they've achieved and what they're giving back is, again, is, 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 is heartbreaking. Mm. It's heartbreaking because you could, the, the money these guys are earning now, they could fund independent with their eyes closed. Mm. Mm. They ain't even, what they forget is that young boy coming through now, that was them 20 odd years ago. So how would they feel if a big player came down and spoke or or invested or helped them? How would they feel? Mm. You know, so this is the, the problem is people are getting big and they're not saying, you know what, let me reach my, reach down for my brother and pull him up too. They're up there and they're cool by themselves up there. That's the problem. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think, yeah, I, I was going to say that, um, you know, for COVID is obviously... Um, Done a massive damage to grassroots football and amateur football on a whole. But one of the things that I, I, I've realised, especially with developing youth, is that you, you have to create the ecosystem. And I and I and I touched on it last week in a sense that apart from just having the football, you need to have all the other things in place. And it's it's very fascinating to hear you um, talk, George, in a sense that you know you need a good lawyer, you need oh. to have good people around you. To mm -hmm. basically guide you, because football is just football, right? But mm -hmm. around that, there's so much other things that 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 play a, a, a really um, crucial part. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking now that what is the future of grassroots football? What is the future of amateur football? How is that going to transform in the future? Is technology? I know technology has come on the scene recently, where now you can post matches online. You can do a lot more stuff online than you know. Uh, than we could have done 10 years ago. So what is it? And, and I think probably it's the question for all of us to be thinking about is that we know that this is going to change however we see grassroots and amateur football. Mm. How do we kind of mobilise to make sure that this is a long consistency? In 100 years' time, this thing's still thriving. We're still training at the best talent because we've put these things into place now. Mm. I, I think now this is the... Now is the best time for amateur football because of COVID and because of Brexit. Because now football clubs cannot buy players under the age of 18 anymore. You can't buy them. They have to be 18 and above. So even when they're above 18, I think a club can only buy three players um, that are 21 in one season. So now, because of COVID, clubs have got no money. Especially the lower league clubs, they've got no money. So now they're looking for the next Jamie Vardy. Because of people like Jamie Vardy, they are on the amateur scene hard. There's scouts everywhere. If you're playing at a good level of amateur football, this is this is a good time for you because clubs have got no money. A lot of clubs haven't even got academies. A lot of clubs haven't got even um, 23s. They've got no money. So what they're looking at, okay, how can we develop a player? Okay, let's get a boy from, I don't know, um, Walton Casuals, for example. Get him, train him a bit, send him on loan. Send him, to, send, him, send, send him on loan to another, or just send him back to Walton Casuals, let him get his game time, game time, game time, game time, game time. Yeah? And eventually try and get him in their first team because they haven't got money for these academies no more. So this is the time now for amateur football. If you do it right, if the player's got enough, the player's got enough ability, the player's got enough hunger, desire, and discipline, this is a good time now for amateur footballers because of people like Jamie Vardy. People don't, people don't realise Jamie Vardy made his, his Premier League debut when he's 27. He was 27 when he made his Premier League debut. Then the brother's got more than 100 goals now. Sometimes the best way to get into football is late. A lot of these boys in the academies, they were soft because everything's done for them. Lovely grass pitches, all the kit, but they've got no hunger and desire. They've got no resilience because everything's been easy for them. But the one that's got resilience, that guy can go far because he can take the hits, the knockbacks. Because football don't owe you no This game of football is a beautiful game, but also it's a horrible game. Football is ruthless. When you're in it, it's ruthless. To survive in it for so long, there's so many things going on, so many bullets you've got to dodge. One thing is guaranteed in football, you're going to fall out of a manager and you're going to get injured and you're going to lose form. They're the only things that are guaranteed in football. Your head's going to go. Manager's going to make you train with your kids. Manager's going to try and sell you. When I left to go to Swindon, I got a phone call from Steve Koppel out of the blue. Oh, hi, George. Are oh, you right, Gaffer? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
We just received a bid from Swindon. You don't need to go, but you can if you want. Basically, go. Put the phone down. I'm like, wow. Okay. Because if I stay, they'll make you love hell. Because they want you out. They want the money. Next thing you know, okay. Spoke to my agent. Next day, we're going to Swindon. Done. So don't get me wrong. It's, I'm not saying this. Uh, I'm not. There's no violins here. But this is football. One minute you could be. You could be the main guy. Next minute the men don't like you. I'm at Wolves now. Dave Jones comes in. So Dave Jones didn't buy me. Then he, overnight he brought in Paul Lintz. He brought in Kenny Miller, Nathan Blake, Dean Sturridge. Right? So I'm like, okay, so I'm not one of his players. He didn't buy me. Surplus. Go. Next thing you know, he don't even speak to me. We don't even say morning to each other. I ain't done nothing to the guy. He didn't even pull me and say, George, look, you're not part of my plans. You know, speak to your agent and get yourself a move. He didn't even speak to me. Blank. I'm like, okay, fine. So at the time, my partner was pregnant with my son, but she was living in, she was down in Kent. So I, because I thought it was me leaving Wall. So we went back, that she went back to the family home in Kent at the time. Then Dave Jones calls me in the office and he goes, I've got a loan move for you. I said, Where's that? Kilmarnock. I went, Excuse me. Kilmarnock, because I, I ain't going to Scotland. You know, my, 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 my partner's going to give birth any minute now. I ain't going to Kilmarnock. So forget that. I said, I'm going to get, I'll get my own club, my own agent. You don't tell me where I'm going. I'll get my own club, my own agent. So, all right. So he's trying to mess with me. He knows I've got, my, I've got a child in the way. He knew that. But he's trying to mess me up. So these are things you've got, these things where you've got surviving in football. So at the end, what happened? Luton, Luton was in, in the championship at the time. I just wanted to get out of, of, of the Midlands. We wanted to go back down south. So um, my agent said to me, Luton, want to buy you? Fine. So he said, Luton are coming to the reserve game. So we were playing Luton in the reserves. So the reserve game at Molyneux. And then um, both CEOs are meeting at the game to do, to, to, um, to do the deal. No problem. I don't know what happened, but that game, me and Kenny Miller just clicked. Kenny just came to Wolves, but he he he, he had um he had low match fitness, so he played in the reserve game to get some minutes. Me and Kenny just clicked in the game. We absolutely just we played front, we played really well. The CEO of Wolves, Jez Moxie, went nah man, he just gone. He said no no no, we're selling him. He just le he just left. He, he didn't meet the um, Luton CEO. Luton then ring my agent. What's going on? We want to do the deal. Wolves said now we're not selling him, and then I and then I stayed. So then Dave Jones then try, because results weren't going well for him. So Dave Jones then tries, because we didn't speak. So then what he did, he tried to, we then communicated through the sports psychologist. So the sports psychologist come to me and goes, George, look, the manager wants you to play. I said, I ain't playing for him. You mad? No, after what he tried to do to me, I ain't playing for that man. No chance. And he goes, George, look, I know, I know you don't speak, but just do it for yourself. Just play the game and do it for yourself. Which I did. I, okay, I came around and I was a professional. I played and I done well. And when I come back in the team, that's when the trajectory, the trajectory of the team just changed. Because me and Kenny Miller clicked, and we because at the time we we played Newcastle in the, in the FA Cup at Molyneux. If we lost, if we lost that game, Dave Jones was going to get the sack. So the, so the owner at the time, so Jack Hayward, is in the press. If, if we lose that game, Dave Jones is sacked. So we won the game. I scored the winner. He saves his job. And then from there, we just went through the roof. And that's the year we got promoted to the Premier League. So what I'm saying is football is not just, you see it on TV, you see players scoring, you see players losing form. You ain't got a clue what's going on behind the scenes because <laughs> some of these managers can be, listen, you can be dealing with managers, you can have problems at home. You tell the manager, he doesn't help you. So football is so... It's such a difficult industry. It's not just playing football. There's so many things going on in the background. So you need to have your wits about you to survive the game because it's a it's a tough, tough industry. It really is. Wow. Really Amazing. Is Amazing. And and again, um, thank you for you know everyone's comments. And we've got crazy amounts of questions, but you know what? We have to go to the legend himself, Coach Barry. Coach, and again, um we 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 you know, I think <laughs> you know, I think all of us can't sing your praises. Enough. So, uh, you know, I, you know, again, thank you for, for, like, you know, everything that you've kind of done for Accra, for independent, and also in football in general. So, thank you, thank, thank you so much. And thank you, thank you. And um, yeah, have, have like you got any questions for like George? You you like know him pretty well, so um, I guess you can probably delve 
delve a little bit deeper. I think Quack was merely George George all the time. But I think what's interesting is that George, to tell them how he, he came from grassroots yeah. straight into professional football yeah. without even being in an academy. No. I don't think people realise that he came no. straight from grassroots straight mm. into I think I think I think what people got to understand is the what Barry. So I got I've got a twin brother, and he was sent he was sent a half, and I was left wing. And Barry is very, it's just simple. It's just really, you see your strength, and you just tweak it here and there. Do this, do that, George. Stay wide. Da, 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 da. So it doesn't complicate your game. So whatever you're good at, it doesn't complicate your game. Barry didn't raise his voice. But what Barry would do, he knows your level. And if you go below that level, he'll just give it that look. <laughs> George! And I look at him and he'll be like, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, okay, okay. You don't want to upset Barry. You want, you, want, you want Barry to be proud of you. Do you know what I mean? So, what, and the only time Barry would disappoint in the player is if we don't do your stuff. Let's say I'm one on one with a player and I try and turn back. What are you doing? You got to take him on. So it gives you that identity, independence, like a family. We used to listen, we used to get in a bus with Barry, you go, go all these mad places, all these, these young black boys going far out. And people look at us like, who are these? Like, listen, we just like these people. Like, we used to flip and rinse these people because they were just look, looking at all these little black boys and this young black coach. Who are these? Like, no one knew we were. When we finish with you, you know who we were. Cause listen, we, we with Barry, we dealt with teams, man. And but we played attractive football. We hit teams on the break fast. We were lethal. So then, when I left Independent, at, I probably what by about 16, 15, 16, we left. Uh, so, so 16, we left. 16, we left. So I went to Palace when the Palace saw me playing for South London. And then when, when I went to South London, my trial is like because of the way I was brought up to play football for independent, Palace didn't even know what hit them. They were like, what the hell is this? Because all the boys in the academies, they all passed it and all, yeah, all the drills. But when it comes to raw talent, they couldn't deal with it. They couldn't handle it because that's because of my teaching. Because of, I'm always on the front foot. I'm always going forward. Don't go sideways and backwards. Forward, forward. So go into Palace and rise through Palace quickly. Steve Coppel was a manager who gave my debut so young. So he would watch the youth team games and stand on my side as a winger. And he'd say, Zach, what Barry used to say? George, wide. Because Coppel was a winger. George, wide, wide. Barry always said the thing, George, wider, wider, wider. Just stretch the pitch. So I'm, I'm, I can see everything, everything. And I'm thinking, ah, he said what Barry says, man. He said what Barry says, man. So the things Barry taught us, because you're grassroots, so... Barry's teaching, Barry's got nuggets, man. Barry's got golden nuggets, but what Barry's good at is good at the man management as well. The man management is just as important as the play, as, as the coaching. The man, so when the boys know Barry's got love for them, that's what they give their all. And that's why big managers, as people like Frank Lampard at Chelsea, players won't move. Because he didn't, there was no man management. He, he blanked him. Really? You're blanking me? I'm, I'm Havertz. I got a five year deal. I'm gonna be here longer than you. Let me just sit back. These guys are they're not stupid. They will players get you a second a minute. That's why Barry gets players every year, every day, every 30 odd years more. Because Barry's name, his, his reputation precedes and goes before him. People say Barry Gordon, yeah, man. That's why Coach Barry's doing what he's doing as such a for such a long time, and he'll continue to do so in, in the name of God because he's a good man and he's good at what he does, and he's humble and he stays the same. You can give Barry 20 million pounds, he'd be the same. No problem. Humble. You wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know. So, so George, George, what do you think the difference is between the grassroots game and the professional game? The difference the when you go when you got into it, seriously. Because remember, all these people, Tabriz, Raymond, um, I think most of them, I think, could have played semi-pro or did play semi-pro, but they did push on to that next level. So what is that difference there? Yeah, it's the it, you I, the Brees, the Brees, I think the Brees played for Leeds or something like that. 
I was I was I was literally part of um, the Yorkshire Amateurs, um, and literally I was huh? part of the. Um, so literally, I was kind of part of the. <laughs> see, you know what, you know what, George, you know, what? you know what, George, this is a running really joke. You know, what? you know what, this is a running really joke. Listen, you know what, George, no, 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 you know. What? Let me stand up, but listen, I'm saying it with my chest. No, 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 this is this. Oh, come on now, please. No, you know. I'm dead. Wow. So I'll tell you what, what I will say is one thing I love when I was at Palace, when I was at Palace, there's a lot of black players at Palace, and the joke we used to get, but that we, you were you going to like this? <laughs> Raymond, stop, stop. I know, you know what? Come on now, come on, Raymond, come on, put respect to my name, man. Come on now. <laughs> I got tears. To play for flipping leads. Have you seen his touch? George, no, George, honestly. I'm, I'm, touch of a Jedi. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Jedi. That's it to breeze. <laughs> Jedi, you know. George, <laughs> George, I will send you my highlights, man. I'm, I'm please. please. <laughs> to breeze. The touch of a Jedi. Ah, oh, you lot, you lot are not easy, man. Not, oh, not easy. Oh. He knew that was gonna kill me. He knew that was gonna kill me. I believe. Mean, yeah, uh, I believe. You, you look like the paper leaves still. You look Thank like you. you look like you got you got, you got it going on, man. You got you. It going on. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, the level, Barry. The level is yeah. You, you you know the level. You can see it's it's serious. Once you start getting, especially into to first team football, did you working with? household names man you know so it's it's for example to make my i made my 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 premier league debut against liverpool at anfield so you're you're in the tunnel and there's john barnes there i had a picture of john barnes on my wall and all of a sudden you got you're playing against these people so you, you got a job to do but to me i'm a kid i'm like this is john barnes i'm like looking like you don't make it obvious because you've got a job to be looking like john barnes. you've got your deodora boots on it's like wow these guys are listening. But when you're on the pitch with them, yeah, they're, 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 Barry is just, wow. So because it came so soon, a year before I was at school, next year I'm, I'm in the Premier League, and it's, it's seeing people I was watching on TV, you're playing against them. You're at Stamford Bridge, you're at Old Trafford, it's just, it takes, it's, it, it, it just takes a lot of time to sink in because we're so humble, man. We're just, we're just, we're just us. We're just doing our thing, and you know, by the grace of God, it happened very, very, very quickly. You know, but um, you, 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 what are the yeah. main attributes? What the attributes do you need? Because it's not just physical touch. Yeah. What about the mental side and stuff like that? Ah, the, uh, the mental side, but it, all, all it is, Barry. When you, the higher you go, the decision making is spot on. They make the right decisions all the time. You make a mistake, you're gonna get punished. You make a mistake, it's a goal. Championship, you can make you can you can make a couple of mistakes, they might miss it. Premier League goal. Their movement, you gotta be switched on. You put your man there, you look there, you look back, he's gone. There's this smart, they, they know where the next pass is going. So you don't just pass it for the sake of passing, you gotta pass it to know where the second pass is gonna go. People don't realize how complicated, how complex it is, how smart these guys are. They're sharp, they're fit. When look up their bodies, do what they eat, no matter they sleep. So when they score one of these goals week in, week out, it's not a fluke. It's the training ground, they're first in, last about last to leave. It's serious. You haven't got time to go partying and meeting girls. You haven't got time for that. Yeah, but I'm saying that when I say the mental side, I mean you said about loss of form. Um, yeah. there is bullying in clubs, obviously. Oh. Man, how do people have you seen players just Capitulate because of the pressure, yeah. mental breakdowns. I've heard that yeah. players have even tried to commit suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that yeah. side of the game as well. It's not just all nice. Do people really know about that side of the game? Have you seen that side of the game? Well, I, 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 I've told you, Barry. I suffered depression myself. Yeah, well, yeah. like, because of the injuries I had, but I didn't know at the time it was depression. I didn't know what it was. Mm. It's only years later I realized. I did a documentary. Um, about two years ago, and um, for the for Premier League World, myself and Marvin Sordell did a, um, um, a documentary about um, depression in football. And I didn't realize I was depressed. I don't know what it was. I don't have a clue. 
you know, because in football, especially in my club at Wolves, I'm like one of the, I was one of the, one of the bigger characters in the changing room. I was one of the, the guys that were life and soul. But a lot of the time, I didn't want to, I didn't even want to go into training. I didn't want to go in the training ground. But once you drive through the training ground and walk in the dressing room, oh, gee, man, yeah, yeah, well, gee, it's cool. Laugh, laugh and joke. Inside, I'm dying, man. Inside, I'm dying. Because <laughs> there's one time I was injured for two calendar years. Didn't kick a ball for 24 months because of injury. So you, so when you're injured, you're in. You're one of the first players in to get to see. Half eight in the morning. I'm leaving at half four. So when you come in, is sometimes in the morning it's dark. So you get in, you see the fiddles and that. Then all the boys start coming in. They all they all start coming together. Then they all have breakfast together and they go out and train. You're sitting in the gym by yourself. They're all together running, joking, training. That was 24 months. Some days you come in, I said to the physio, I will, I'm, I'm, I'm not training today, I'm going home. And like, you, just, you just lose your head and he goes, right, let's say sometimes, but to go to London, go back home, go home for a week, get your head, get, get your head right and come back because I, in the end, I wasn't a barrier, I wasn't a footballer anymore. I was just a player trying to get fit. I was a player trying to stay fit. I wasn't training to play a game on a Saturday. I wasn't training to play a game midweek. And I had personal issues going on in my life as well, outside of football. So I then had to go to the doctors and go on antidepressants. You know, so no one knew that. Wow, antidepressants. Barry, man. Because you, Barry, you're trying to juggle everything. You're trying, to, you're trying to be a footballer. You're trying to be the guy that everybody knows. You're trying to be George and another footballer. You're trying to be the family. Barry, in the end, Barry, you can't keep juggling things. In the end, he snaps. But, so my but friend, that's it. My friend Leo McKenzie. You know Leo McKenzie? He's played for Charlton, Palace, striker, Norwich. He's, he's Clinton McKenzie's son. So he's coming from a boxing family. I didn't even know. Obviously, everybody knows now. But when, when Leon was at Charlton, it, so Leon suffered big depression. Big, big time. We didn't know at the time. We know now, but not at the time. Leon signed for Charlton. Um, he was going through some things in his life, going through a divorce. Um, finished training. He's staying in the hotel. Because obviously, he moved down from... I he, he think he... He was playing for Norwich at the time, from Norwich to um, Charlton. So obviously, there's a hotel initially before he bought a house back down, back down south. Head wasn't right. Went to his hotel room, took an overdose, tried to kill himself. Like that. No yeah. one knew. By the grace of God, he, he, he was found he's okay now, but he's still suffering from depression from this day. Because you're, you're a footballer. I don't think that thing will lift you. George, George, it happens in grassroots. So, what advice would you give, like Raymond, to breathe from somebody of this who Nana who play grassroots? They get pressured at home by their missus. Mm. What would advice would you give them? Listen to the missus or go football? Whoa, 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 coach! Sorry, George. Sorry, George. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. Here, about pressure. I, I can speak for Ray. I can speak for myself. It's only Tobias who gets pressures from from the missus. Amen. Wow. Only Tobias. Amen, Nana. Amen. 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 Wow. Only to Bruce. To Bruce is the only one who has to gauge how many times a month you come for you. And really? to make deals. You gotta find a balance, man. You got to you know three for almost four seasons. You know he played yeah. less than 10 games a season. I think he's got a 20, wow. 20 appearances in four years. You know yeah, what, wow. you know what, George? I've literally exhausted all of um um all of my um excuses Excuse. why why I should be going to football. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even One thing you know, that the wife is the boss, man. You don't want no head at the wife at home, man. Thank the you. Wife is the boss, man. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell him that good. We'll never see the man. We'll never see oh, him. Listen, listen, if you're a happy wife, happy life, man. Listen, <laughs> you got to get that balance, though. You got to get that balance. I think, I think, um, yeah, correct. Sorry, but, um, and again, um, thank you for everyone that's that's literally put in the comments. Actually, George, is it um, all right for, for us to keep you for another 25 minutes? If, yeah, if, cool, man. No problem. Um, I want to actually answer, uh, I'll kind of, um, hopefully get you to kind of answer a few of the questions that have actually That's come okay. in. Uh, the, 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 the kind of go back because there have been crazy amounts of messages. 
Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Okay, so one was I saw. Oh gosh, oh, gosh, gosh, gosh! I saw it a minute ago. Um, Why are you finding that to breeze? No, oh, sorry. Um, I was great. Question, George. Um, who who was the best player that you ever played against? Oh, jeez, man. Um, probably the Man Man United team. So. So you're playing, you're talking about people like Beckham, talking about Keane, that team there, Skulls, Skulls was Skulls was a joke, man. Yeah, listen, that guy, you couldn't get near him. You couldn't yeah. get near him. I remember, do you remember do you remember a game in 97 when Man United played Juventus at Old Trafford? It was a close to the score, I think it was about four, three or something. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? So that game there, midweek yep. game four, we played them on a palace on the following Saturday. So they so they so we thought, look, they're tired from that game there. We've got this, this, this opportunity for us. They beat us 2-0. They was in cruise control, man. They just did enough to win the game. You know, so for me, they're probably the best players, probably so many you played against Shearer. Shearer was bad, man. Shearer was serious, a serious striker. I never forget when you're playing, you're on the pitch. So Jolene Lescott is a was, was obviously a big, strong centre half. Obviously, a young, young pro coming throughout Wolves. He knew he was gonna do what he did in his career as a top player. And Jolene, what his what his strength was 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 nicking it, going nicking it in the front of the, of the striker and gone. And I one time I see him, he tried to do it to Shearer. No, 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 no. I see Joel and sort of stop. He tried to do it and just bounced off him. And I said to Joe after the game, Joe, Shira, I see you try it. He went, he went, G, man. No. Strongest man in the world. He said, so Joel knew after that, don't even try it. So Shira was frightening. Back then, Beckham, Beckham deliveries. Well, we know it, but when you're there, you see it. When you know what he's doing, the brain, the mind, the work rate, up and down, woof, up and down, up and down, up and down, the work rate. He was bad. Skulls. So I say Skulls. There's probably stuff, loads of players I'm missing as well because I played against so many. But the one I stand out for is probably Skulls. And the one of the best to play with. You get Matt, in, Paul Ince is a joke. Paul Ince, Dennis Irwin. There's so many more. Southgate, there's so many. It's just hard to pick out one, but I will probably go with all around Paul Ince because you know Ince is a good player. But when you train with these guys, you train with them, <laughs> frightening. And I must say as well, best manager I've had probably Glenn Hoddle. But Glenn Hoddle used to train with us. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. And he's, he's, he's in 50s, so you imagine what was he like back then when he's playing there. He's doing that in training. What was it like back then? So, so Paul Scholes, Incy, and even even Glenn Holler was unbelievable as well, to name but three three players. Amazing. Um, got James Osborne that's coming. Uh, what is the funniest moment you've ever had in a game? In a game, funniest moment. I can't really, not really. I'm blank with that one if I'm honest. I can't really, nothing really springs to, springs to mind. I mean, look, man, I'm getting old, man. I'm 46 now. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of years have gone by since I retired. But to think of anything, find this moment, nothing really springs to mind. Sorry, man. Um, What about in the changing room, like before or like after um a game? Like, like, like you know, any kind of pranks, any, any kind of silliness that... Yeah, things have gone on, but it's like... <laughs> you might not find it funny, but you probably have to be there to experience to um, to, to appreciate. But one time we was in a pre-season uh, pre with well, a couple of things actually spring to mind. One time we're in a pre-season tour, <laughs> and uh, we're all just chilling now by, by the pool. So it's all that lot of the lot of the black players. So nah, no, nah. so so Pete, me, Nathan Blake, Sturridge, Lescott, Matt Murray, we're all just chilling around the pool, and people like Kenny Miller. Kenny used to roll the brothers anyway, so he's like a brother anyway. So we're all just by the pool, just just relaxing. And Jolene get Lescott gets up and he just dives in the pool for um just because to, to, to cool down. But the way he went in the pool, he went in like 
that that angle didn't go in diving like this. He dived like that. And we're like, oh, he dived kind of like, what? Mm, don't know. So then he comes out the pool. He comes out now like this. We're like, Joe, you're right. He's going like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, did you bang your head in, in, in the pool? No, no, no. I went, how come your head? How come your head's bleeding? And we went, <laughs> The whole, all the boys were crying because he licked his head at the bottom of the pool. We tried to style it out. But we, <laughs> we tried, nah, nah, we're right. We're like, I can't be, what's that? Yet? Is that blood? He went, nah, yeah, man. I licked my head. Man. Listen, we were just, and you know, black people, we laugh loud. <laughs> we laugh loud. So, yeah, that was, you probably have to be there, but we that, that was, that was, that was a good one. And another one, I, never, I remember one time, me, Kenny Miller, and Paul Lynch were walking to um training. All right, but then this is this is in, this is the Marbella, it's a pre-season tour, and then the, we just saw so it was a golf resort. So we just saw um a golf bag just by itself on the driving range. There's no one there. So Paul Lynch and Kenny Miller love their golf. I don't play golf. So um Kenny Miller getting and in to get a ball, get get a, get get some clubs out of the thing and start hitting balls. And I'm like, how do you hit balls? Incy tells me, right, George, get it, hold it like this. Da, 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 da. Cool. So he showed it to me. So I'm hitting balls and I hit one and went, boom. I went, wow. I went, ah, oh, I like that. I get another one now. Hit it. Wow, oh, I like that. Keep hitting, hitting, hitting. All of a sudden, Incy and Kenny, they're gone. <laughs> they're chipped. I'm just hitting. I'm thinking, where are they gone? Anyway, I'm just hitting because I'm. I'm getting used to it. I'm hitting sweet. I'm like, okay. Didn't realize <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the golf range. So the guy who owned the clubs, he's gone onto the range to get his balls. So he's Spanish man's walking towards me, cussing me in Spanish. Ah, ah. Kenny and Lindsay clocked it gone. <laughs> this guy, this I'm licking the balls. The balls just going past his head. I'm focusing the balls. I could have killed it. My little man, the man had been dead. But the man just come, he was cussing me. Where's your manager? What Kenny Miller and, and Incy chipped off? And anyway, again, you probably need to be there, but if you were there, you'd have laughed. But anyway, that's, 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 that's a funny moment for me. So they're the ones that tell you because like, the certain things I can't say because the certain yeah. things that like, <laughs> <laughs> what goes on the dressing room stays in the dressing room, man. What goes on the tour stays on tour, man. I hear that. I hear that. Um um, Hepburn Security um, has, has put this. George, have you ever considered representing young players as an agent, as you've um, had first had an experience in, um, or, sorry, first had experience of the good and the bad? Actually, I did. I used to be an agent. I used to be an agent for um, a good couple of years. But the agency game's tough because when I retired, and because I'm so, so still very relevant in the game and a lot of people, because of your reputation of being... Um, just like Barry, really, being a, a person with a, a genuine heart, players trust you. So I had a lot of players, a lot of ex-teammates as my clients very, very quickly. You know, but I probably, I wasn't I wasn't a businessman. I was still in player mode because I just came out of football and straight into the agency game and, and, and the, the, the company just flew, overnight just flew. But then when you're doing deals and, for example, I'm not going to name many names, but one of my teammates became a manager. And I, I had a, do you know a player called Keith Andrews? Yes, for he's Ireland. An Irish guy. He's an Irish, he's, he's a pundit. Yeah, 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 he's a pundit. Yeah, yeah. So Keith, Keith was at MK Dons and he rang me and he goes, George, a lot of, um, there's a lot of interest in me. I want you to, because I looked after Keith at Wolves. I, I was at Wolves with Keith. Keith was a, a kid at Wolves and I was there. So I looked after Keith. So all these players like Murray, Lescott, I looked after, when I first came, I was a senior pro. So looked after the young boys. That's just the way I did things. Just looked after them and gave them a lot of time. So Keith Ramy goes, George, I heard you're an agent now. Can you represent me? Which I did. So basically, I took Keith to a, a particular club. But the manager of the club was my ex-teammate. So the manager said to me, yeah, we want to sign Keith, but it's going through his agent. So the manager's got his own agent, and he wants the deal to go through his agent. So I'm not going to get paid. I'm like, hold on. You're a manager for this football club. You're getting paid for your football club, but you want this deal to go for your agent so you can get paid with your agent. I'm like, no, this is my client. Anyway, the deal got done, but I never spoke to that, that, age, that manager again. 
So then what I soon realised is that sort of practice was commonplace in football. The corruption in football is, it isn't, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So cut a long story short, I I did a lot of deals um, for players, but I just couldn't deal with the cut from nature of it. I just, not, I'm not that sort of person. So I walked away from it. But, um, and some of the deals I've done for young players, the hardest thing to do when you're dealing with young players now is managing their expectations and their family's expectations because they change overnight, the families. And this is what I'm trying to say. You're trying, you're trying to help um, these parents. You're trying to help the players, keep them humble. But, for example, I had a player at Chelsea, young player at Chelsea, and he was on he was on 2K a week at Chelsea. All right? I put him on 20K a week. At Chelsea. I got him 20K a week at Chelsea. So from two to 20, I'm, I'm negotiating and thinking to myself, in my mind, this is a flipping joke. Because this boy is nowhere near the first team and he will never play in the first team. So how the hell are you giving him a million pounds a year? But that's the going rate. So, so then the boy said to me, I said, okay, we agreed it. So I was negotiating with Michael Emanalo at Chelsea. So me and Michael got on very well. And in fairness to Michael, what happened, I, I can't really blame him because that particular player, I said to Michael, the player agreed it. I said to Michael, we've got a deal. And Michael said to me, so George, you give me your word. We've got a deal. I said, Michael, we've, we've got, a, I give my word, we've got a deal. Okay. And then go back to the player, right, this is the deal. And um, we're going to go and sign, you're going to go and sign it next week. The player goes to me, no, I want more. Excuse me? No, I want more. I was speaking to the boys in the change room and they said I should get more. I said, I don't care what your what other boys say. That's an unbelievable contract for you and your family. And I've got the, and I've got the mum and dad six figures. Now, mum and dad don't get six figures because the boy's over 18. But I still got them separately six figures. Well, I want more. No, no, no. Look, I give Michael and Milano my word. No, 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 no. I want more. I want more. I want more. I go back to Michael and Manalo. Michael, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, he wants more. Michael and Manalo hit the roof. He hit the roof and he blamed me. I knew it. You want more money? I knew it. So Michael, it's not me. I, I, I've had enough. You know what? I ain't dealing with anymore. You can deal with Marina. So Marina Granaskea, she runs Chelsea. So you can deal with Marina. I'm like, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. So anyway, I dealt with Marina. And Marina said, look, George, we're not going to give him any more, you know, because um, we had Josh McEachern. We put him on crazy money. And jo Josh, M Josh McEachern's career went off, off the rails. And and that was that. And I said, look, Marina, this is a good family. They won't, they won't change George. Trust me, they'll change. Marina, they won't. George, they'll change. So um, in the end, they, so they didn't get another penny. They got they did the deal. The minute they signed that contract, they changed. They changed. Black family, they changed. Oh, the dad was a, the dad was a, was a security guard um, in the prison. You know, the last changed overnight, and they just the money went to their heads. And I was like, "Wow, money changes certain people, man." You know, and the sad thing is, as I say, it's nowhere near Chelsea's first team, but Chelsea pay crazy money. They pay for me. They pay their young players. Way too much because a lot of these boys are not good enough and never playing the first team. If you're playing the first team, good luck to you. Earn what you earn. But if you're not winning the first team, why are you getting a million pounds a year? It doesn't make no sense to me. You know, if anything, you're killing it, you're going to kill these players. It's, it's too much. It's yeah. too much. So for me, I, I've been an agent. Barry knows I've been an agent, and Barry knows me and Barry have extensive conversations. And I, I, I try and guide players here and there, but to get involved in that world there, it's just. It's so murky, man. It, it really is. It's really murky. And it's not good. It's not good for your mental health. I'll tell you that because there's no loyalty in that game. No way at all. <clears throat> well, well, no. Amazing story. Amazing story. No. Um, thank you for that. Uh no I, I've literally got crazy amounts of comments. Um, I think you know, people are uh, like literally trying to mock me about my appearances for independent, ah. um, which is uh, again not true. Um and and we will <laughs> We will, uh, we will, we will, we will um, leave it. We will uh, leave no, it. No, we will leave it. It's close though, Tabrice. It's close. It's close. You know what, George? I get this every single Sunday. I, 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 I get, I get, I get, I get ridiculed. 
you know, um, uh, <laughs> Eggman. It's, it's, it is crazy, but no, honestly, like, thank you so much for everyone's comments. I mean, I don't know if there's anyone on the kind of panel that, that literally has any, you know, um, any kind of questions for like George, because again, we can have to respect if there's kind of any, any kind of questions, please, please fire them to George. Before I do. Oh, thank you, Nana. So kind, so kind. Yeah. So my question is, obviously, I'm quite a, a patriotic person, and I know that growing up these days, there's a lot of, especially people that have like a Nigerian background, but they're choosing to play for England. Mm. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to have your thoughts. And I think you got called up to Nigeria squad. Yeah. You were injured, but yeah. yeah that's, when I, that's when I brought my leg in the car. So oh, I, was, no. I was selected for the squad. And then I brought my leg and then that was that. I came up from the squad. And then they never, they never came back after that, which was, I was gutted, man. I was gutted. I really want to play for the Green Eagles, man. I really did. You know, but just like uh, our golden generation, and I think oh, there's enough there's enough players from a Nigerian background now that we could have that again. But yeah. they're all, they're all kind of selecting uh, different countries. So I just wanted to know what your thoughts were. Yeah, listen, it's it's every player's choice. Is who how they feel comfortable. If they've never been to Nigeria before, they're not gonna have a connection. You know, I've, I've been to Nigeria just the once, unfortunately. But I I just wanted to play for Nigeria. I guess. I don't know. I just feel that connection. I don't want to play for Nigeria, um, but it's a, it's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. If the player feels comfortable playing for Nigeria or for England or whatever other country, it's it's purely their it's their their choice. I mean, Karen, you know, just say if you were if you were in their position, you you play for Nigeria. That would that would be your choice, you know. But either way, it's a it's an honor and a and a blessing to be able to, to represent your country for sure, man. <clears throat> yeah, brilliant. And anyone else from the panel? Yeah. Um, no, I just want to say, like, massive thank you to George for coming on this show. Yeah, pleasure, man. A lot of um, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a referee. Uh, no. oh, I'm a referee. Respect you, man. Respect you. Oh wow, no, gosh. No. Oh dear me, here it goes now. Um, <laughs> some, some, some players, I've met quite a few um players who have played at very decent level. Um, including like Ivanovic, um, Captain Cole, yeah. and I just want to say that people's per 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 uh, perception of um, like these elite players, mm. some of them are quite snobbish. Some of mm -hmm. them are down to earth. But I really appreciate you coming on the show, being mm. down to earth, like a people's person, and you know, yeah, and, and, and you know. Answer the question, just like just like one of us, you know. This, this, because that's who I am, now. Just for, we, we're... I, I really appreciate it, you know, and I love it. Um, just wanted to, to, I guess my my question is, what would you say? What are you doing now after football? Because a lot of people, you know, who get to this elite level, it's mm. all about football, football, football. They don't get like a tertiary education. They don't go to uni, so they. You know, all they do is football, mm -hmm. and if something happens, like the injury that you had, for example, then they are left with no, no plan B. Mm -hmm. You know, what 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 is your advice? What advice would you give to them? And also, what are you doing now? You know, you in some some sort of different vocation. What what are you doing now after football? Because as a 2016 now, obviously you you know you got to feed your family and this and that. What are you doing now? Well, you got to have. Um, you got to have a release from football. You can't be football, football, football. You have to have something, a hobby or something else to just to keep you grounded, to, just to just to relieve stress, you know, because it's such a stressful game, man. It's just to to be to, to hit the levels you've got to hit every every week. You're getting judged on your fitness and your performance. You get, you know, fans are on you. It's just it's, you need a release, you know. So that's something I would definitely recommend any any player that um well, especially professional level, you need something to to release. So for for me, I'm 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 blessed to what football's given me is given me unbelievable intellectual property. You know, I'm I'm very blessed to know certain people and in certain walks of life that I can do certain business deals with in many different things. You know, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a businessman. You know, I'm doing. I've got a few things I'm involved in right now. Um, you know, whether it's young players or outside of football, I do still do things in football. Um, I still do what I work with Barry still. I, myself and my wife, have got a performing arts school. 
you know, with so in, in dance and acting and you know, which we've got about 200 children there, you know. So I'm 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 very blessed because I lost everything, man. I lost everything, but in losing everything, you gain so much. You know, I, I the most important thing for me is I rely on myself, my faith in the Lord. You know, because when you're doing okay for yourself, when things are good, when the trough is full up, pigs pigs come out to eat, man. When the trough is full, pigs come to eat. So when it's empty, there's no pigs. It's just realness. Yeah, <laughs> it's just real people around you. So now I'm like, okay. Okay, because everything goes full circle. Everything. Because the difficulty of being somebody in the public eye or footballer or anything, but people people know who you are. People know you're George Endar in the Premier League. George, you're, you're at Wolves. They know you've got money. Now, I've retired. If you want to label you, like, oh, it went bankrupt. That's fine by me. You don't know what I'm doing. So I'm doing things in the radio, but now I've got so much wisdom now because I've been on the floor. So now I've had a lot of time to think, a lot of time to realign myself with the Lord. So what that does, then that makes you close with your wife, with your children, your real friends, your real people around you. Because when it when it comes around again, you know how to deal with it. I didn't know how to deal with it. I was 17, bang, spotlight. You got to learn on your feet. Now I've got experience. So with Barry, young players, you can guide them. I've got my own son. I can guide him as a young black boy growing up. I can guide him. There's certain things you can't do in this world. You've got to be smart. There's certain people you shouldn't rove in this world. you got to be smart. You know, so I'm, I'm a rounded person now. You know, I've succeeded by the grace of God. I've fallen. And by the grace of God, I'm coming again. But this time, you've got the wisdom now. You know, so you have to have something aside from football. You have to have something where you can release. You have to get your education. If you're a smart boy or girl, get your education. Knowledge is king. Knowledge is king. You got the knowledge with, with influence. You can open many doors and help your community. It's not just about you or your family. You got to try and help as many people as you can. So your my brother is helping the young kids. Barry's helping the young kids. It's not just training them. It's about raising them to be good human beings. Dodging the pitfalls. There's traps everywhere, man. When you got money, people are coming for. You don't, know, you don't, but you don't know their motives. Cause these people can, they're actors, man. Oh, I'm your boy, man. Oh, I'm there for you, man. Oh, yeah. Cause they're, they're smart. Cause they want, they want something. They want, they want a piece of you. Now, now, nah, nah, you're okay. I've seen that before. Red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. That's what I prayed for. You pray for wisdom and discernment, which I've got in abundance now. I can now see if people, even if people are wrong people around Barry, Barry, mine, man. Yeah, because Barry's so nice, Barry's so safe, Barry's got a good heart, Barry thinks everybody's like Barry. Barry thinks everybody's got Barry's heart. Barry, he ain't me. He's jealous of me. He's sticking close. He's trying to get a player to Barry. Ain't gonna happen. Barry, mind him. Barry, same with me. George, don't like him, you know? Really, Barry. No. Okay, cool. Keep your eyes, eyes and ears open. Eyes and ears open. So I'm blessed to be in the world of business. I'm still blessed to be in football because football's who I am. You can't get away from it. It's, it's, it's who you are. The people you know in the game is just who you are. You can get to people. You can open doors. You can help people. You can help young players. You know, but I do it in the name of the Lord now. Where before I could control things myself with my own money. I was doing things in my own strength. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It was never my money. It's never my money. It's never made, God gave me the gift. You got to recognize that, which I always did, but I didn't recognize it enough. So now. Okay, sometimes you need to be strict. That's how you grow. That's how you help people. That's how you got imp that's how you got deep empathy and deep sympathy with people. So that young player coming through, going through deep depression, going through confusion, going through lack of funds, going through bankruptcy. Come, come, I can talk to you. I've been there. Let me help you. Let me advise you. Don't do that. Do this. Train properly. Eat properly. Be focused. And anything you want to do, and by the way, there's no guarantees you're going to make it. So if you don't make it, do this. If you don't make it, do that. And it's hard. Football's hard because when you're, you want to be a baller, you've got to be focused. Don't, there's no can be. I'm a baller. You've got to focus. It's really weird. You can't think of can be. But you have to. If that makes sense. You've got to focus on being a baller. I never focused on plan B. I didn't know how I was going to make it, but I just trusted the Lord. That's God's job. 
Why do you see what I'm doing? And God opens the doors. And that's what it is for me. But in the same breath, you've got to be smart. You've got to have the right circle. And you've got to be smart because when that money drops, you've got to be smart with it because the whole world comes for you, man. The enemy comes for you. That's a fact. Money and power breeds, brings evilness. You've got to be smart. Money and power brings brings a green eyed monster. It brings it brings it brings darkness. Some people go to de de depression, gambling, women, drugs, because they can do what they want. They can do the highest echelons. They can get what they want. And with a young person with time on their hands, that's dangerous. It's dangerous. So also, you want to be a baller, but sometimes be careful what you wish for. Because if you can't handle it, it can get the better of you. So as long as you've got the right foundations, focus on the Lord, you'll be all right. Yeah, well said. Well right. said. That's me personally. You'll yeah. be all right. Well said. And um, I want Coach, Coach Murray um, to actually have uh, the last say and the uh, last question. But um, before we uh, we go there, um, we just want to clear, clear something up. Um, and this is from <laughs> London, <laughs> South United. Uh, does that judge know someone called Frank yes. Dixon? Okay, yes. yeah, just like want to make sure that you play for the real palace, not to be just leads equipment. No. Oh, come on, man. Oh, this <laughs> I'm not putting respect to my name, but anyway, but yes, um, so so, um, so yeah, so, um. Franklin Dixon, Tino. Yes. yes. Isn't it Tino of LSU? Sorry? Isn't, isn't it Tino of LSU now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Tino of LSU. Listen, LSU. What a player. Really? What a player. He speak. Oh. But you see that there? He didn't have the right people supporting him off the field. This is what I'm saying. He didn't have the right, he had no agent. Franklin from Batsy, man. Me and Frank, me and Frank were tight. We were close, man. And then, I don't know what happened with it, but it, he, was, he was in a youth team, but he didn't get his pro, and he frankly just fell away. But what a player. Great ability. But he didn't have the support network. How many times did you hear that story? So, yeah, I, I know Franklin. I think he's a chef. Is he a chef now? I think he's a chef. He's a lot. He does eat a lot, but he's not a chef. <laughs> he's not a chef. Okay. <laughs> 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 Oh, Ray, that's my that's my a very good player. <laughs> Anybody, if you speak to him, tell him something. My love, man, he's a wicked player. Nice guy as well, Frank. Yeah, good player, man. Yeah. Good player. And uh, coach, coach Murray, we, um, the last words to you. The last words to me. Yeah, we enjoy people the time to preach. I think you should get a couple of the others to have a word. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Well, you know, we will actually um carry on running for like another 10, 15 minutes if if you know if it's all right. You know, um okay. Um I just kind of want to talk about um but that drink and the drugs really. Um, you know, um again that was that was probably pretty pretty rife in um, in the kind of area that you know, yeah. you know, you was playing. I mean, can you kind of uh, give us any situations where players would 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 actually come to training or literally come on oh. that match day, and they were wow. absolutely off their rocker? Well, not so much match day, but the drinking culture was 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 big back then, man. Players, listen, I remember, I remember, God, 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 may God bless his soul. Remember when Ray Wilkins came to Palace. I was a big Ray Wilkins fan, man. So again, when he's coming, my mind, I'm like, wow, it's Ray Wilkins. Obviously, you got you can't go on like a like a fanboy. But I'm like, when you meet him, you're like Ray, Ray was just ah oh, when he's when he was on TV, so where he spoke, that's what Ray's like. Class, class, bad boy player. And I never forget we went to Portugal for a pre-season one time where we we trained hard, but the manager said you can, we, we train hard, but you can go out every night after. Every night you can go out as long as you're here at nine in the morning and you train hard, you can you can you can go out every night. So one night we one night we went out and um Ray Wilkins was so drunk he couldn't even stand up, he, he couldn't even speak. So Chris Coleman and Southgate had to hold him up and walk around with him because he couldn't 
I, Barry, he was absolutely I'm like, this is a lovely look. I'm not I'm not a drinker. I'm yeah. not a drinker, but these guys were just so Coleman, people like Andy Fawn, Chris Armstrong, these guys could not so Chris Armstrong, but Southgate even, these guys, the, the, the drink culture, Chris, um, Paul Stewart, another level. Another that, level. So that, that was normal, right? Standard. Standard. If you didn't drink, you're weird. Yeah. If you didn't drink, well, what were you drinking? Yes, it's a pint. No, I'm right, man. I'm not into no pint business. But these guys, they drank, listen, and the next day, they drank a booze. They drank mm. a booze. They got square out, just square out. Sweat it out. I don't know how they but did it. They were training the next day. They could do no problem. So it, drink was rife back then. And gambling. Gambling, rife. So it's more... It's so still rife today, isn't it? Barry, because these, these guys have got a problem. It's like an, 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 away, an away games on the coach. I was always being the boys always at the back, but the gamblers are at the front of the coach. By the time they get to the destination, it could be 20, 30 grand down. 20, 30 grand down. Yeah. What the hell are you doing? Yeah, they're booking the they're, they're, they're betting on the horses, and it's crazy. It's rife. But kind of like I say, they got a lot of time on their hands. They got a lot of money. They got a lot of time on their hands. A quick question, George. You see, like a lot of the young players now get targeted by girls and stuff mm. all the time. Going out, you get targeted. Women. Yeah. Was it the same back then? The way the yeah. girls? Yeah. yeah. Was it really? Barry, because you remember back in the day, all the this is when the uh, all the honey trap started. Yeah, remember, remember news of the world. There's always there was a story. The girl, yeah. I met blah blah. I met the white girl. So you could see them. You could see them in the club. We're like, nah, nah. Mine that one. Mine that one. Oh, nah, be all right. Be all right. Next, you know, back in the paper, Barry. Just <laughs> <laughs> because what I'm saying. They know who you are. So the bigger the player, the man couldn't move, man. So, can I ask Raymond? Raymond. Yeah. How do you deal with your players and Ross? Raymond to the Ross, you know. I don't know what Barry's gonna come out with now. How do I deal with him? The discipline side, like George, oh. how are you how are players disciplined then? Drunk or women, how are they disciplined and how What's the difference? How great? How do you deal with it with the discipline side for things like that? But by yes, what, what it was, they'll do it when they're allowed to go out. They no, they're drunk. Were players allowed to go out and get drunk? Then? Was that so when, they out, yeah, so when they go out? It's like you play a game on a Saturday. That's so they go out on a Saturday night. So the manager, as long as you're back in on Monday, Papa, as long as you can train and perform, he doesn't care. Okay. That's not, that's not good for your body, though, is it? That's not good no. for you. No, you ruin yourself. But these guys, they they they're used to it. They they're, they're trained that way. That's all. A lot of these guys have been drinking for years, Barry. Yeah, but yeah. it's the long term effect once again. Exactly. It's a long -term effect. So now you see players, some of my ex teammates now, Barry. They're ballooned because they're, they're, they've been drinking for big beer guts. You know, you know, you're not you're not playing anymore. That's why a lot of players when they retire, they're huge, Barry. Yeah, they drink. You know, so but it's not helping. George, George. We've got players in our vets who are quite huge. I don't know if it's a drink problem. Mm. I don't know if it's a fitness regime. I don't know what Raymond's doing about the sort of level of it. Here we go. <laughs> 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 I was just throwing grenades, boy. <laughs> oh, He's over there with his bowler's arm. He's over there like some kind of fast bowler. <laughs> 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 right back, I'm driving this one straight. <laughs> I'm asking simple question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah, actually, Ray. So, how, how, like, you know, do you uh, look at people's fitness? Um, what they say in uh, particular WhatsApp groups? Like, what is that like, your kind of um, stance with with like things like that? Um, well, for fun and jokes aside, discipline is always hard, especially. Mm -hmm when you're dealing with power level because a lot of people then they're friends. Mm. So you 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 try and separate the friend from the manager. So you kind of look at yeah come Saturday we're serious and there's a line that there's a line you hope they don't cross because of the relationship you have with them. But I think the main thing as I said was said earlier tonight is man management. You gotta know who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And you know the nature of the people that you're dealing with. 
There are some things that people, I mean, Therese and Nana, you know, there's incidents that happen within the team. And sometimes you know it's just literally a clash of personalities. There's not malice behind it. Yeah. So sometimes, you, like, especially when you, like, with our team, I'm always very protective of the group because we have a group that is, for most of us, we look at this as our last real football. We're not going to, we're, we're coming to the end. So the group to me isn't just a football group. We're friends. Yeah. I would, for years, we will associate, we'll talk, we'll, that's, right. that's what will happen. So I'm always conscious of the people who I bring into that group. I mean, there are some players out there who I know are excellent footballers, but their mentality, the way they conduct themselves, just won't fit within our team. Yeah. So there are some I've had to get rid of. Nice guys, but their mentality just doesn't fit the group. Yeah. So you sometimes have to recognise quickly, can this work, can this person work within this group? Because the group comes first. Forget me, forget the individuals, the group has to come first. So if someone's damaging that group, yeah. get them out. And you just have to be ruthless in that sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ray, Ray, what, Ray why, why haven't you gotten rid of Tobriz though? Because he plays like four games the whole season. <laughs> because Tobriz is very good for the group. He's exceptionally good for the group. Sometimes we need someone who we can... You know, I won't say... Get our frustrations out on, but to breathe, no, that's that's not 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 because some people get lost and carried away and forget how much people do tune into social media. Mm. They get comfortable, they start talking, saying things what they shouldn't, exposing mm. things. Mm. Do you understand that? Yeah. So how do you think social media, because it can be a big distraction for players and players are putting stuff on there. Yeah. You have forums where people start saying things what they shouldn't, a bit over the it's really edgy. Mm. So we've all experienced that. How do you think, what do you think about social media? in the game and how it's exposing the good, but it's exposing a lot of the ugly sides and it's coming out as well. I, f I think, well, a lot of a lot of the top players, they've got people managing their accounts, bro, so they don't actually do it themselves. Um, no, but I don't mean that, George. I mean, players have been caught by other people, just they don't realise someone can just take out a phone any time and just, boom, remember, that's how it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on, you're on camera within a second. It'd be, it'd be hard for me, bro. I'm glad I'm not playing in, in that respect, not playing today, man, because you've got no privacy now. You've got no, you've got to be very, very careful what you do. It's, it's, it's proper goldfish ball and bowl now, man. You can't go anywhere now. You know, what you do all what you say, any word is picked up. Now. You got shit, Barry. The people are with footballers is, is very difficult now because now people's wages are known. Air is speaking that he's on 200 grand a week. And, Listen, when you're and the thing with, thing with footballers, footballers are tangible. You could bump into a, a, a star just in the in a, in a supermarket. Whereas mm. someone like Brad Pitt, you ain't gonna see Brad Pitt. You ain't gonna see Brad Pitt. So when you see Brad Pitt on so sixty million a film, that's Brad Pitt in it. When you see someone, a young Sterling, just down at, I don't like him. So it it breathes that. Mm. I don't like these footballers. They're on two hundred k a week uh, now. People are struggling now. People have got some people, especially with coronavirus, people are losing jobs, people have got no money. So you see a little footballer breaking the, the, the COVID rules, partying, you just get people who's more angry, Barry. Yeah. But you've got, you got, listen, I understand they're young, but you've got to look at the whole thing. There's a lot of people that don't like you. They don't like your lifestyle. You've got to be very, you've got to be very, very, even more careful than usual because there's a lot of haters out there. Anyway, if they can take a picture of you doing something you shouldn't be doing, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. You know, people like Jack Grealish going out for parties. What for? Stay in your house. You probably got a five million pound house. Stay in it with swimming pool. Stay in your house. Why you got to go out for? They got to. They got to think, bro. They got to be smart because people are jealous of footballers anyway because of the money they're earning. That's not their fault. They earn. They're getting a piece of what the clubs are getting. That's their wages. They're good at what they do. It's very hard what they do. 
So they're entitled to what they get. But you gotta be very, very, very careful because a lot of people they want to trap. Why ask that question? Because we've got to monitor our forums and stuff like that very no. closely as well and come down on what people say on forums because it can be exposed. I yeah. think raise a note. Every, everyone on the panel must have a comment on that. To, I know Tabriz is in the social media, so he must have some ideas about it as well. Yeah, I, you know, it's uh, um, it's kind of, um, I'd say, cut out that kind of middle middle person to actually kind of how our our kind of views and our opinions heard. You've actually seen uh, a huge explosion in in kind of uh, football fan uh, channels now. Liverpool, United, Chelsea, you know, it's the fans. Um, Arsenal as well, you know, Arsenal TV literally kind of um, exploded and literally now fans now literally have like the power to 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 literally voice like their opinions um and you know especially at kind of grassroots sunday league saturday league level um it's literally like a way for, for like you know players to to literally get you know um highlights you know to, to actually film to actually film their games to to actually speak to you know coaches like you know barry ray um players you know supporters you know people behind the scenes that um not you know like i'm not saying that they can actually want the like limelight but you know this is an opportunity for us to shed so much light and you know literally appreciate the people behind the scenes because you know i i can always say that football is the bloodline um and um a lot of people kind of are clouded that you know you you kind of turn up on a you know, Saturday, Sunday at you know at the at the, at the pro level, and think everything is just done you know, and dusted. There's, there's always stages to your career, um, and um, for me personally, it's it's kind of opened up you know um, amazing opportunities and um, you know um, amazing doors, and and you know when it's time for me to eventually hang up my like boots, um, I know that this is going to be an extension of my footballing career. Um, so. So to Bruce, why to Bruce, sorry to interrupt you, why are the social media companies not clamping down on, on racial abuse in the place? It is just I see that said the other day that the monkey emoji isn't offensive, isn't it racial um, and racially motivated? What are you talking about? You can see when someone put a monkey emoji to Marcus Rashford, they're being racist. So I don't understand why the social media companies are not clamping it down. Well, you know, I mean, but, you know, it's kind of very hard to police every single social media platform. There's, you know, this, we're like talking about almost a billion of different accounts, like mm. burner, burner mm. accounts, um, you know, um, you know, different IP addresses, you know, fake, um, fake um, names. It's, you know, you know, exactly what you said before, you know, racism has, you know, has always been there. Now it's been heightened with, with the likes of social media now. Um, you know, it'd be kind of, you know, um, I think they can, you know, definitely do a lot more. They can, they can, you know, try and release and kind of safeguard, um, you know, platforms, but really and truthfully, it's, it's about us actually speaking up now. So, you know, mm. when we can do get racially abused, then, you know, it's kind of, you know, up to us, um, you know, People of influence to actually highlight it on our platforms, and you know, you know, we should talk about it. More. You know, these kind of social media platforms just kind of give us a voice to say, okay, look, certain things are going on in the game, and it's not right. We don't have to go straight to the FA and you know, you know, talk about issues. We can kind of go on a platform, and the FA or Sky Sports or BT Sports will come and literally talk to people. At least have a strong community. Um, it's it's a uh, yeah, you know, you know, it's kind of very, very kind of hard, you know, hard to please that. And you know, actually, Mark, I mean, I would, I would love to kind of get your your. Sorry, uh, before, you, before you go to Mark, can I just jump in? Sorry, before you come go to Mark, I must admit I disagree with you on that point. I personally don't. Yes, it has its challenges, but. I don't believe that's the reason why the social media companies have done nothing. It's because there's no pressure. They're not accountable for it. They're mm. very to put their hands up and say, not my fault. Mm. They, it's not anything. If I put something in place, 
and I'm benefiting from it financially, the responsibility should be mine to create safeguards to prevent yeah. it from happening. And because yeah. the social media companies are always absolved from any of the responsibility, mm -hmm. there, there's no there's no cost for them to bear. So there's no reason for them to invest the time to put in safeguards mm -hmm. to prevent that. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at a banking app, look at the amount of steps you've got to go through to go and do your mm -hmm. online banking. Mm -hmm. Because they're accountable for that money. Mm -hmm. Make a Twitter account in five seconds, like bank. Mm -hmm. Here I am. Mm -hmm. and I can say mm -hmm. what I want to anyone. Mm -hmm. if, there, if Twitter was being fined, for example, for mm -hmm. these instances, you would do mm -hmm. these steps to create a Twitter account, triple. Mm -hmm. They'd put place, things in place. So we as society aren't asking them enough pressure, and the authorities aren't making them responsible for it. Let someone say something wrong. So, say for example, the kingdom. You soon see how fast they track that person down, and they're in court. The guy that abused Ian Wright mm. showed remorse now, and mm. there's no criminal conviction. Mm. Mm. So, where's there's, there's none? Mm. There's no accountability. So that mm. was all I, I wanted to say on it. Um, Mark, I would uh, you know love to get your um, opinion. Uh, you know, as like you kind of dealing in like a technology. Yes, yeah, so I work with a lot of these uh, tech companies and, and so forth. I think what it, what it comes down to is that, you know, the reason why they haven't made the strides that we would like to see from a black uh, perspective is because it's making them money. They're not accountable to anyone in this space. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, you know, and then, you know, when we look in football, apart from, you know, you know, kick it out, where is the black union or the black group of footballers or even black people just say, listen, we're not going to step on this pitch <laughs> unless you resolve this. And that, that's a bit, that's a, you know, that's, that's radical. But, you know, we look at Colin Kaepernick, what he done in terms mm -hmm. of taking a stance. When are we going to take a stance to say, listen, we can't keep taking all these money, pat on the back and all of this endorsement while in the same breath, they're burning down everything. Now, uh, I think that for me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm of the radical mind that this always comes down to ownership. What do we own in the game of football? What do we own in the game of grassroots football? And as George said earlier, I think that this is a great time to, for some type of ownership, whether we create our own app or whether we start to think about platforms that we can operate on compared to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the big tech that's governing it now. When are we going to take the initiative to do stuff? Because it is, it, it, I think we're, we're quite in a, we're quite in a world position to do so. It's about how do we align that to the whole ecosystem? In my eyes. Wow, brilliant man. Well said. You know what, guys? You know what? Again, we are now running two hours twenty, two hours twenty, and you know what? If this it feels like five minutes. It literally feels like five minutes. So no, you know what? Honestly. George, thank you, thank you so much um, for like, you know, um, coming on. Um, hopefully, you you literally um, uh, enjoyed uh, everything. You know, enjoyed the band. And you know what? Please come down to to like one of the independent games, and um, hopefully, if, yeah, if, like, yeah, and uh, hopefully, if if like Ray picks me, I'll I'll actually show you exactly what I can do. <laughs> First to be picked, you know. You got to turn up. Or in black van, but Oh god! Oh god! Oh, no, man. No, the pleasure. Man. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been a real pleasure to meet you guys. And and kind of have a chat tonight. Thanks for, thanks for your time, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Bro. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Um, thank you. I want to thank um, Ameka Top. Thank you for coming on. I want to thank Ray. I want to thank Mark Martin, the urban teacher. I want to thank Nana. And I also want to thank Coach Harry Guru. And also, last but not least, George. Thank you again for coming thank you. Thank you, guys. Guys, this, um, this has been the Amateur Footballer Unhinged. My name is Supreme. Please let go and subscribe to the Independent FC Instagram page, the YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe to the Amateur Football channel. 
I salute everyone that in football that are doing amazing things. I, I salute academy players, pro players that I kind of look into and get back to the grassroots and support the movement. I salute you all. I will see you guys here again next week, Sunday, 8 o'clock. Be there. Thank you so much. No, bro. Thank you, guys. Thank you.